Wait a minute, Adam. You haven't seen Dark City? You really haven't seen Ernest Goes to Camp? What about Barbarella? Well, let's remedy that. Welcome to Raised by Spoilers, where we watch and unpack cult movies. Some of them good, and most of them bad. Welcome back to Raised by Spoilers, everybody. Tonight, I'm joined by Plebby and Adam, the feminist warlord, Nintendo Geek. Hello. Plebby and Amanda. Hello. And I'm your co-host, Geek Movie House. Adam, what did we watch tonight? Apparently, we watched softcore porn. I mean, I wouldn't go as far as softcore as much as it is a 1960s romp through space. A sleek, sexy adventure of plastic, latex, <laughs> chain spandex, mail. chain mail, um, oh, a, lot a, lo- ink. a lot of oil and ink, yep. uh, some amazing sets, and a fucking banging soundtrack. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we watched Barbarella. So we're going to have a bit of a confusion on here because we've got two Amandas. We do. So it's going to be a bit t- difficult, but that's fine. So I want to make this clear. This movie was... Specif- specifically specify that you wanted to bring this to me, Amanda, not plebeian wife Amanda. Nintendo Geek, what do we Nintendo got? Geek. So wh- why why this movie? So obviously you're you're into this and you bring you, you have all we have all these movies where like hey Adam's never watched a bunch of these weird movies and so on and so forth. Not just weird, but other mo- movies. But you decide you want to bring the one that gets me horny. <clears throat> um, always. It's kind of a rite of passage. Uh, This movie was filmed and released in the 60s, released in the 1968. Uh, It is important because it is a science fiction movie with the depiction of the first female uh, science fiction character brought forward from a comic. Uh, Not a serial like Buck Rogers or The Flash. Flash Gordon. Flash Gordon, sorry. No, 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 uh, no, 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 the Flash. Yeah, Flash Gordon. No, the Flash. Like the Speedster. Yeah, the Speedster. Oh, shit. and Buck Rogers. Oh, We're shit. both serial f- uh, series, right? Right. Okay. Yep. So Barbarella was based on the 1960s uh, French comic. So, in correlation, Barbarella was the first like comic heroine brought to film, right? So it's kind of a rite of passage if you like science fiction films. And also just like, you know, a little risque. Uh, a little risque? Also titties. Titties. A lot I of titties. Mean, you know. In gentlemen. every shape, form, and artistic beauty, mm. crammed in plastic and strapped with straps and, you know, tinsel and fur and Feathers, a lot of, a lot of titties. Would you go as far as it is a science art film? Yes. A science, it's very a much science friction film. It's hard to say <laughs> if if this friction. was put out now. If yeah. someone said, "Hey, this is it's you know the year 2000, and this is the movie I decided." Ladies to put and out. gentlemen, it is the year 2000. Yes. Get back into the time portal and Will come Smith back. Will Smith is cool. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Godzilla I... <laughs> is storming Manhattan <laughs> in the year 2000. I would say that yes, this is definitely an artistic, but I can't. It's hard for me to judge. And sit here and look at it and go, oh yeah, in the 60s, this was considered art versus, was this kind of supposed to be serious? Kay. Because I know Flash Gordon was supposed to be serious. This feels like the Geiger of Europop, where it's you like- gotta, You gotta elaborate on that one. Weird, <laughs> like out there, artsy, over the top, but like kind of, I don't know, everything with Geiger is like tentacles and, and vaguely sexual, even though it's aliens, but also it's creepy. Well, this had no and tentacles because this... everything that was alien was humanoid. Okay, no. Did you see that ship on the lake? Its sail was just tentacles. <laughs> okay, that ship was clear. Okay. Should we take this step by step? I think we should fully unpack Barbarella. <laughs> yes. On tonight's episode of Raised by Spoilers. Adam, let's go around the room real quick before we get into the rigmarole and we yeah. rate, rate those eyebrows and whatnot. Did you like the film? No. Okay. That's fair. Did you have a fun time watching it? Yes. Fuck yeah, you did. Very different. Those are very different uh, Absolutely. Judges. Absolutely. Nintendo Geek, you brought the movie to the table. Thoughts on Barbarella? Like, where does this stand with you? Well, like I said, it's kind of a uh, uh, stepping stone in uh, the beginnings of what science fiction has become. Uh, there's many, many, many different uh, modern films like The Fifth Element 
uh, that have ties to inspirations, at least from Barbarella with the costume designing. Uh, it's Holy weird. shit, you're right. There's a yeah. lot. Yeah. To, there's a lot. This movie's touched a lot of other films. It's one of those artsy fartsy. There's a lot of touching oh, yeah. going like, on. There's there a lot would, of touching uh, in this film. <laughs> a lot of touching. There would definitely be like a like Flash Gordon had a lot of inspiration from Barbarella. Uh, it was an Italian director of wanting an Italian director. Of course, all Italians are perverts. <laughs> yeah, uh, Roger Vidim. Uh, or Vadim, sorry, and he based it on the French comic of the same name, Barbarella. Now, there are some variations from the original uh, comic, but I don't know. I I really like it because I feel it's very... It was definitely ahead of its time. Uh, the costumes were crazy. Like you said, the soundtrack was fantastic. Uh, it had stems in Pink Floyd, uh, the guitarist had his roots in there as well. Um, but do you think it's a good movie? Did you enjoy I the movie? I loved it. <laughs> Sorry. No big deal. Do, um, do you think it's a good movie? You know, it's good in its own right. Okay. I feel it has a very strong uh, set design, very oh, yeah. strong presence about it. Yes. The plot is very strong like it, it holds itself through and through like it has a beginning it has a middle it has an end like it, it doesn't kind of veer from its original plot point I until, until they to, completely run out of money i'm going to strongly disagree with that statement <laughs> and we'll get into that yeah. in a second can we pause and come back to you in a second sure amanda yo what did you what are your thoughts on barbara <laughs> oh what did i just watch um, what did you just watch that was that was that was an interesting romp. Um, yeah, I have to agree with um, Plebe and Adam. I think that was not a good movie by all standards of what makes a good movie. However, I feel it's also an okay parody. Even though it's not a parody, it's like, ah, it's it's a parody. It's a parody of space and sci-fi and everything that is the 70s so i guess it's okay in that sense but i don't think that's what it was meant to be so yeah i want yeah. it came out in a time where they were really trying to take it in an artistically uh artistic fashion of itself seriously with some ideas and i mean obviously concepts i but... gotta ask do we know whether or not this movie was intended to be artsy yes 100 percent. okay and do we know that it was intended to take itself seriously or not uh, it's a 50-50. Yeah. Okay. Depends on who you ask. So the thing with Barbarella is that they filmed two movies with the same cast. Really? At the same time. Barbarella was one of them. I think if you... Mandy, do you know the rest of... Uh, it's a Diabolic. Uh... Diabolic? Ooh. Diabolic, which was another Italian film. And the th whole thing with Barbarella was there's this kind of sweet spot, 60s era Hollywood where they got funding to make a movie and then kind of blew it on very, very elaborate sexy parties. Ah. Mm, so what we like are Hollywood. witnessing and the film that we're seeing is probably 30% of what was actually filmed because they were all just partying you in, in space. How could you not in those in costumes? In fucking that is space. Like, like they were filming it in Spain. They were filming it all over the place. And Barbara, like it, there's so much... That era of like 60s to early 70s, very Wild West. Okay. Very Wild West of sex, drug, love movement, funding, what we're going to make, how we're going to turn it over. The film itself really, really wasn't re widely released in the United States. It was a European classic. Like it was, uh, it was Italy, This Paris. kind of shit could only have been accepted in Europe because right. clearly it was, as we've alluded to or made quite straight out, it's highly sexualized. Yeah. So it's much not so. afraid to. No, and it's not afraid to. And that's one thing that I think kind of upsets me. And maybe this is a thought, a brain that comes from, you know, 2020 being projected back to the 1960s going, I kind of hoped, I, I guess I would say I hoped that this was a strong heroine female. I'm thinking like, you know, Ridley, but not dark. Right, right. Uh, but she is the actor. She is the not as in the character, but she her character is the one making the plays. She her character is the one making the choices, taking I, I guess we'll say the offensive. Um, but it turns out, 
And then while at the same time, I, I was hoping that she'd be sexually strong in her own body and be both strong with herself. But it turns out that she's just a sex icon as a damsel in distress, except made the heroine. That's my problem is she didn't win through her intelligence. She didn't win through her skill. She won because she has a vagina and a hot body, which I think is bothered me. I really wanted something more. But again, I think that's my brain from 2020 projecting back to the 1960s. So (laughs) Amanda, you can probably speak better on this. But there's a whole era of 60s films in Euro, uh, not necessarily James Bond, but not necessarily Grindhouse or Slasher Flicks. This was pre-Slasher Flicks, where it was, how do we get people into the theaters to see a pair of tits? Okay. Right. And this is that kind of sweet spot of we are taking a major motion picture with major actors and we're going to get people in with big names. And it kind of falls in that category of not necessarily a titty film, but walking that fine line of mass distribution because of that. Like you were telling me earlier, Jane Fonda not originally got famous, but she had nudes leak and somebody posted them. No, she had a, um, let me see here. It was an 80 story billboard promoting a film that she had done in 1965 called the circle of love. Uh, and it was, I'm sorry, it was a giant billboard set out promoting her 1965 film, Story of Love, uh, projecting her nude body out, uh, also from another movie that she had done with the same director, uh, there was candid nudes that were kind of leaked out into, uh, the public as well. So that was, uh, leading up to this uh, 1968 release. So already a couple years before Barbara came out, she was already known as kind of the international sex symbol. So I got I got to know. Obviously, we're in an age of you know the Me Too movement and trying work. At least there's an attempt. I don't know how far that attempt has gone of, I guess, uh, protecting women actors against producers, mm-hmm. right? And shit like that. Do you, obviously, there's no way she did not sleep with some producers, but do you think she was a sex icon of her own volition, or do you think she was forced into that? It sounds like that she probably posed for some photos, so like when she was in filming. She may not have known at the time that it was going to be a gigantic billboard. Ah. And then the candid photos, uh, probably that was probably between her and the director, not intending to be released. Who was her husband at the time? But yeah. I mean, it's with the story of Barbarella. Campbell, you are... I Amanda. just want to make a side note of trying to imagine 1960s candid pictures somehow circulating around the populace because this is like way pre-internet time. Right. And the only thing that I could think of is like, some guy in a back alley in like New York City with just this like jacket full of fucking Jane Fonda nudes being like, hey, you wanna buy some nudes? Sorry. And it's like they were actually sold to Playboy. <laughs> and that's how they uh, got out. Okay, that uh, makes more sense. So sorry. I'm like, how so does a lot this candid of photos a lot like of that. It, a lot of it was promotional in a way. They took Jane Fonda being sex kitten. Well, candid meaning not she didn't know particularly know they were being filmed and then they were sold to yeah, a third okay, party. Okay. So okay. that could have been a little dicey. So, so this she, whole movie starts with a interesting, it took me a second to figure out how they were filming it, but interesting, basically, let's not kid ourselves. It's a striptease. It's a striptease. It's oh, a yeah. fun striptease. She's got this bubble wrap. I call What do I call it? Bubble, all I have my notes say are bubble wrap. Yep. Uh, <laughs> bubble wrap spacesuit of it's basically bubble wrap and tinfoil. Yeah, bubble wrap tinfoil spacesuit, and she's slowly taking pieces of it off, and it's trying to simulate zero g. Which when did we go to the moon? Nineteen sixty nine. Was it? So these guys kind of thought about zero yeah. g prior yeah. to yeah. that being yeah. a thing. Impressive. Yeah. And so they did that, and you were discussing. Amanda, that it was a plexiglass with a picture behind her. And we were kind of filming downwards as she was laying down. Yeah, she was laying on a plexiglass table and the spaceship was a photo underneath the table. 
Yeah, and then they kind of filmed it. it. They posed it as if it was from a side, so it felt like she was just in the air. But mm-hmm. really, because you could tell that there was something stopping her from going in a certain direction. Cause she, the way she had to move and, and circle around. Well, you called it. She was rolling around. But it, yeah. it was yeah. still a very fun shot. I, I'm, I'm sure at the time it was impressive and cool. It's, it's still, now it's pretty impressive I enjoyed myself watch watching it. it just because it was a very fun shot. And until yeah. uh, Nintendo Geek yelled out, yo, she's rolling around on a very thick sheet of plexiglass i was like fuck i didn't even think about that that's i didn't know why. until right? because yeah. you yelled out well, wire work right and i was that's, thinking wire harness yeah. yeah and that was before all of that true to an extent so i also in a little bit of research here a few days ago uh in order to do that scene because she was very nervous because at that point like she had really like she wasn't really she hadn't done many of these types of movies before where you have to get like fully naked Pornos. or you know she hasn't done a lot of porn. Yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> uh, so she ended up, I guess, in an interview, she mentioned that she was basically drunk. Uh, she drank a lot of vodka in order to get some liquid courage in order to do that. Oh, my God. And nice. then uh, apparently something happened to that footage. So she had to do it again, hung over. <laughs> Oh, no. So, oh, either no. way, not good. So she's probably rolling around a little too much. In yeah, 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 yeah. So there- I wanted to bring up one thing that was really, that really interested me in that scene. And I, I specifically wrote a note on it. There was a, she had the kind of the helmet on and they had like the black, like the two-tone visor. Yeah. So mm-hmm. they had like the clear bubble, classic clear bubble helmet. A fishbowl within a fishbowl. The fishbowl within a fishbowl. And they had like this sort of black plastic that was sort of going down and revealing her face for the first time. Liquid. Was it liquid? It was yeah. liquid. Oh, wow. That's it why like, it was slowly draining. Oh, oh that's impressive. Yeah, it was yeah. like okay, a, an that. ink or whatever. And yeah. you could actually see the, the helmet was um, two two panes of whatever, oh, plexiglass, yeah, and yeah, the yeah. liquid was between yeah. it. There was some cool effects. Yeah. There was some cool psychedelic effects. But they effects. had the reflection in the back. And it obviously, had like it looked like two lights from you know the cameras, more or less. Mm-hmm. But you could see her hands, and they were trying to show in the scene. They were doing a very... It was artsy, and the, like, they could see her looking at her hands in yeah. the... It was kind of cool, little reflection coming out there. of a high, almost. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 That's yeah. awesome. Um, and then the two minutes in, there was a nipple. Yeah, that yeah, was the first, was two first, minutes. first minute nipple in. We get some, <clears throat> we get some Barbarella theme song. The credits come floating in. We get the Jane Fonda font. We get the Barbarella font. We get the song, and then all of a sudden, she's slowly undressing herself. It. Uh, it leads to the shag, or I should say the most coziest interior of a spaceship <laughs> I have ever yes. seen. The cuddle, SSS cuddle. Um, you know what? That place must be very good for, like, I struggle in this room yeah. a lot for sound sure. and sound reverberation. Mm-hmm. That room must have no sound reverberation Nothing. whatsoever. I, no I, sound. I think that would just be allergy central, though. Like, could you imagine just the dust and skin cells and everything else that just gets The shag in wall, that. the shag in, roof. In, in space, there is no dust. In space. It's space is made of dust, let's space, be honest. Dust. <laughs> <laughs> I just found it no space dust. I, I just found it hilarious that they first they show her stripping her armor, her, her spacesuit, and then it's like the call from the president, Barack Obama. And she just oh I, you know, love to the. Love, there's right. a video camera clearly between her and the president, right? And the president, she's like, "I'll go get on clothes." He's like, "No, dear, no." Well, it, it honestly it sets up uh, the moment and kind of the vibe of these people are not ashamed of their bodies. True. These people are not ashamed of who they are or what they look like. We are clearly in the future, and yes, you. We get it's a film within a film. Right, like they're not. It's not a screen where they're actually looking at each yeah, other, yeah. kind of thing. But he does do the joke where he kind of checks her out. Yeah, yeah. right. Even though it's inappropriate and think, thing because of the professionalism of, of aspect of it. But we kind of get it sets up that that kind of tone of like the whole like the whole premise of Barbarella right off the beginning is like in the future there is no violence, there is no weapons, and people have stopped fucking. Yeah, yeah. There is no sex. It's literally the hippie movement. As well, it's the no, future. no. It's like the anti anti. Part. It's like the anti anti hippie, hippie movement. Yeah. Well, I guess no, In because way, it, right? It's about we science. love each other so much that we don't pro we procreate, but only if we can't afford it. But it, it's almost like well, if you take yeah. the hippie. It's almost like if you take the hippie and then make it scientific, where it's like it, it kind of felt like a demolition man mixed with hippie. Oh, the three seashells. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, I was thinking more there's the sex scene in Demolition Man where they put on the VR headset oh, and they yeah. have sex over VR. And that's all I can think about with the hand sex thing or the, the virtual sex pills. Was, we'll, the get, pills. we'll get to that. We'll get yeah. to that scene later. But there's I, I think I lost that. And I think that that concept was lost. Obviously, there was no violence. They made that very clear. But it, I felt kind of weird because like we live in a future where there is no violence and sex is scientific. Also, you have this creepy dude checking out a woman. He okay, I get the concept that he's saying, don't put on clothing because I don't view you in that. I don't way. have time. I don't have time this for that. This is a secret message. This is what we're trying to tell you. But it, okay. and we're out. I, I yeah, and it just felt kind of weird because then they're like, oh, we also don't have violence. Also, let me zip you over three machetes, two blaster guns, the silent the 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 what was it? The silent cricket from MIB. The the micro rocket launcher. The micro rocket launcher. The drill dough, and then you know two laser beams. Like, I what don't. The fuck? I don't know if those were. I don't know if there's a line. You might be able to tell me, but I don't know if those were a line. Where like we're gonna ship you over some ancient weapons. I didn't hear that. I one. didn't hear uh, that. I, I'm confused. I believe it was because even though Earth has eradicated all that, he's like, hey, uh, if we talk about the plot uh, for a second, <laughs> she is a. Uh, <laughs> She is basically like a, a an agent of the government sent to discover and to find uh the doctor or scientist Duran Durand in order not to be confused with the band Duran Duran yeah Duran Duran uh has made a devastating weapon the cyanonic ray that will basically annihilate anybody and send them back to the fourth dimension. And just not be able to recover them. So it's like, hey, this person out in the far reaches of space has this technology and us as Earthlings who have eradicated all sense of weapons and violence, I need to send you some weapons in order to help eradicate them. Uh, Think like if we were to send back like clubs or like swords and shields back to like the Middle Ages. You wouldn't send a gun. Well, I guess in their case, they sent a gun back to the Middle Ages. <laughs> yeah, you know what did. I mean? They did. They did, though. But uh, yeah, so she she's basically sent to stop this scientist who has started well, tinkering and things he really shouldn't I don't really think she knew have. that she had to stop him. I think at the start it was, you need to find him because arrest yeah. him and bring him back. And arrest yeah. him and bring him back. But here's some weapons in case, because we know you're going to run into some trouble. Yeah. I actually had a, a realization. So she was given two weapons. She's given the little me handgun thing. And then literally a weapon that had like a hand, like a metal hand on it. She yes. never used that. No, she didn't. What the hell did that one do? I, what are you going to do? Bitch slap somebody with an iron hand? The like, movie was rated PG and we can't technically tell you. <laughs> huh. Yeah, okay. Well, maybe she did use that sometime in the film. I mean, Barbarella. <laughs> <laughs> I did like the robot. Um, with like the the wall, the, the wall. so it had like oh, these like, like flippy the, like, clacky, walls, yeah. flippy, the clacky, things. flippy like tile wall the, that would move and, and adjust as like the AI talk with the, the incredibly gay voice. Sixties art style is so prominent in this film; it's wild. Just with different shots, different different scenes, the technology, all of the buttons are cubes or crystals. crystals oh yeah, and shit. It's. There's All such a weird vibe the to it. The ship it's, like breathes when it the drives. Ship breathes. <laughs> like it like there, has these little diaphragm things on the sides. I'm a- like, why though? Absolutely. Well, this is that weird thing where we got back into Flash Gordon, and you guys were on that one. The doors. Uh, uh, <laughs> fucking Flash Gordon. We talked about science fiction ever since Star Wars took itself almost too seriously. Yeah. Right. Mm. And then the problem was films that took themselves too seriously just became silly yeah Yeah. right barbarella predates flash gordon in a way where we have this just it's fucking weird science fiction yeah it's buttons that are jelly and crystals and weird shapes and we're 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 pulling chains and like that the whole bit with the, the we're gonna get to uh commander dildo with the <laughs> lever, Commander dildo. The, with the levers and everything. Uh, oh yeah, so so good. Um, there is some takeaways. Dildano. Dildano. I apologize. Uh, yes. well, I think <laughs> what happened was the '80s, right? Because a large portion we get in these action movie phases. Yeah, Star Wars was pretty early because it was in the '70s. '77. But it was clearly inspired by the growing '80s, and the '80s were kind of like a grunge period. And I think what this, was 
the 80s in general. Okay. So and I think we were leading up to that during the Star Wars development. And what was going on is we were getting this sci-fi grunge future, whereas this future is not a grunge future. It's a positive looking future. Right. Everything is positive. When you think of the future, it's positive. Now, right. when we have sci-fi and we think of the future, it's generally negative. Right. And it's grungy and dark. Right. Now, and I think there's a portion of that because they didn't know what space looked like back then. No one really on the floor knew what it is. They didn't have the pictures we do now, the film we do now. Right, right. Well, it honestly, in a weird sort of uh, rose-colored glasses, jokes about terraforming. What? Like, we come, we conquer these planets. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, that era of 60s science fiction where everything is happy-go-lucky. And it's like, hey, we found a planet. And we can live here now. Yeah. Well, yeah. how? Well, we terraformed. What do you mean? Well, we came. We destroyed everything. We converted the oxygen <laughs> in the environment. We killed all life that we have. And now we live here. And it's like, oh, that's dark. And it's like, <laughs> but we're good. And we're doing space drugs and getting high off AstroTurf. And fucking everything is amazing. Because we live in space, like yeah, it, it, there's like that weird little like, it's it's uh it's wild. It's a wild concept of uh, what expectations versus reality versus the dark gritty future that we ended up getting. Yeah, and uh, you go from Barbarella from to uh, Logan's Run. Even I never watched that movie. Oh, you've never seen Logan's Run. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hang on. I'm sorry. I fucked that up. I did. I didn't do the bit, ladies and gentlemen. Wait a minute. You haven't seen Logan's Run? <laughs> um, God damn. Logan's Run's a fucking great movie yeah. because of that whole terraformed Earth concept, right? It falls right into that era of like Planet of the Apes. Wow. Mm, because of yeah, yeah. 68. You got to think of those those these movies that kind of came out. Yeah. That were science fiction films that were either fun, you're stoned, you're young, we're going to try to get you to see a film even though you're not watching movies anymore or all of these youths today are just going to watch movies and we're going to try to give you something to think about. True, true. Right? Sure. Logan's Run, your Planet of the Apes, Barbarella to an, to an extent, but Barbarella honestly feels a little bit more of like the late night rental. Barbarella it feels does. very much just like it's the 70s, it's on, it's late at night and you're watching it because what VHS has came out in what, 70... 78, uh, the first VHS, I believe, came out in 76. So mainstream, probably not until closer to the 80s. Right. So my grandparents, they used to have to rent a box. And right. they, they watched Superman. And they had when the was... entire neighborhood over. Hold on. When was Superman out? The Donner films? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. I want to say 1980. Does that make about sense? I want to say 80. I don't know if the top... 1978. 78. So 78. So they had to rent a box and they had everybody over from the neighborhood and they watched it on the biggest TV they owned, which was not that big. Yeah. Right. Yep. And they had kids sitting on the stairs and like everybody. They made an event of it because they rented the box for the night and they could watch fucking Superman on a little colored TV before VHSs, before all it's of that. It's funny you Is talk about Superman. Betamax? It was Betamax, okay, I want to yeah. say. Yeah. It's funny that you think about, that you talk about Superman because it, this movie put Superman, I always felt super, the old Superman, the old, you know, the original, kind of strange to me. The Krypton science and the, the weird crystal. The crystal and, buttons. The, the ladies crystal and buttons. gentlemen, it's all connected. We're bringing it back. It felt so <laughs> oh weird. But God. now that I look at like the 70s and you go, oh, the people who made Superman were growing, were growing up. Or working on. Were working on these when they were younger and they were right. clearly inspired by an impression. It's like, oh, I see where this is all coming from now. Now, the thing that I felt really weird is they spent way too long showing the cra air quotes crash sequence where she was, just, they just had like her ship kind of, it was a room built on hydraulics or something. I don't know what. And it just kind of just moved around a bit. She's like, oh, oh. Yeah, she was like rolling probably around Probably not hydraulics. Room. Probably people. Probably people shaking the box like probably. they did it, yeah. like they do in Star Trek. Hey, you're, you're absolutely right. right. They move, they would shift the set. The set. And so they spent a whole way too much time doing this crash with psychedelic images in like the the one you know window of the. But that's the what ship. people were paying to see. Yeah, absolutely. They were stoned out of their mind and they wanted to go see a fucking titty film. I just find and it hilarious one. that immediately there's the president going, "You are one of our best agents." Now go immediately crash. <laughs> like what the? Fuck? Well, she fails upwards a bit. She. She fails upwards the whole movie. She's their best agent, and she literally bangs her way out of every situation. Okay, have you never seen a fucking James Bond movie? 
Hold on, there's not, a difference. Not the no, older there is ones. not. No, there is not. <laughs> I have a... James Bond fucks his way through those no, films. No, no, there's a reason. Uh, because there has been no violence on Earth for so long, think about it. Like, if you're training to be, like, an agent, you don't know what actual violence is. So they wrote it in. Like, of course she's going to be clumsy. And, of course, she's going to kind of, like, not know exactly, like, you know... Well, they actually wrote it in like that, They right? wrote, yeah. Okay. That was intentional that, like, she would be more of, like, a uh diplomat yeah more of a diplomat rather than like a fighter like she's yeah. more of a negotiator and use these weapons well, as a that. backup but is she she's like you've been traveling out in space you're trained in your spacecraft oh you crashed it was it happened so immediately which is fine and then i think her, it was the planet itself the like evil, the, there was the, like no, a, the, a lot, the red there was the liquid. yeah there was a, the the magmas yeah, they yeah, talk about how it is with positively her. charged. Yeah, and it causes like a magnetic field yeah. around the planet. And because she's cases. good, it was trying to exp- like uh, you know, because it, it feeds. Her out. Yeah, it feed the the magma oh feeds God. on. I actually hadn't considered that those two are tied together. Yeah. Huh. Like you the Magmoth. Thought a little bit more about this movie than I gave it credit. For. Maybe, maybe if you <laughs> didn't just stare sad. at fucking Jane Fonda's body the entire time <laughs> yeah, and yeah. pay attention to the plot, you'd be great. Because it, you know it feeds on true. negative, and she's such a good uh, like. Uh, they do mention her positivity the entire yeah, fucking film. Positivity, sweetness. She's very naive in these ways, where everyone else on the planet has kind of been like uh, not corrupted, but like you yeah. know they're in the primitive, quote unquote, primitive ways, right? I and it's very much a divide of good and evil. Yeah, I do find it funny that the first enemies she um, finds is, I can't quite decide whether, and I think only uh, Plebe and Amanda will get this, but I can't decide whether it's the two children from The Shining or if it's the twins from uh, Korra, Legend of Korra. So it's um, the Grinch. It's all the uh, the people of Whoville. Uh, okay. When they went psycho and went off the deep end because all their shit got stolen, and then they took all the toys and made them into monsters, and we're gonna kill people with I them. I just like that. In order to knock out Barbara, so these two twin girls in weird, snowy but weird outfits with weird hair. Well, she goes to the ice planet. She falls to the ice planet. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And instead of because they want to knock her out. So instead of just throwing a rock at her, they put the rock in snow and throw it at her, even though she wasn't expecting well, either they put, one. They, they put like a fucking diamond. Right. Yeah, they put it was a like diamond. A they put a, yeah, a diamond in a But why did they just throw the diamond at her? She clearly wasn't expecting because, either one. Because, because they're it's shitty a, kids. Well, if it's a snowball, you think, oh, it's kids. Ha ha. They're playing. Whatever. Right. You don't think to like, oh, my God, this thing's going to literally knock me out. Right. Right. <laughs> and then they tie, they tie her up and then get her up on her skis and the fucking unicorn manta ray oh Yo. we don't want we that's don't talk I about love. the manta that's ray what i love i love that weird sci-fi so shit good. man when we get to predators where there's the predator dogs where we get to logan's run where we get to all these weird science fiction films dare i mention the tree scorpion <laughs> <laughs> from fucking Flash Gordon, okay? Oh, you put your man. hand in that log, and what do you get? You get high as a kite, my man. But I just, I, I think that was the moment in the movie where I broke down. I lost it. Yeah, <laughs> it, there was two moments that I lost it. Two moments. One of them was this one where I, I just, I was like, hey, they're showing this manta ray, and they're kind of putting it like a it's horror kind of flopping. Way. It's like <laughs> flopping on the <gasps> snow. <gasps> <gasps> Kill me. <gasps> and they're kind of like setting up these skis for her. And yeah. You're not quite sure. It's almost the, the way they cut it. They're treating it almost horror-esque. Like you're right. not sure what's going to happen. Right. And then suddenly they pan out for a moment and they show that they're on the skis. And she's like, I haven't skied in a while. And then the manta ray just starts vibrating forward. <laughs> and I just, as, as a sled dog, this is effectively a manta ray acting as a sled okay, dog. Okay, you're going to have to Google manta ray sled dogs because clearly you've never seen them race. And <laughs> if you haven't watched the fucking Alaskan vibrating manta rays, <laughs> you need to fucking Google or clear your search history and then start Googling this, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the vibrating manta ray sled dogs of Antarctica will change your life, okay? There's a whole betting scene. Yeah, but that whole race is cultural appropriation, you know. I would rather not vibrate on it. Yeah, you know what, though? <laughs> but we it was like... so weird that they treated it as horror, and then immediately it became comedy. So, like, it jumped from one to the other, and it killed me. It took me, I just Well, laughed. then you go right to... Okay, so hang on. We're getting kind of into the plot, no, ladies and gentlemen. No, The fact that... Well, granted, she got knocked. They didn't hit her in, like, the... They didn't just hit her in the head. They hit her, like, in the eye. <laughs> 
So she was out of it. And then she kind of let them tie her up and then let them let them lead her on to this ski. Yeah. Well, and, and then, he, like you said, they only went like 100 feet. Like, yeah, they she did could, not go far yo, at that all. Twist, though, she could have stepped best. off unless she was severely concussed, which she probably was. Probably she could have just stepped off. Well, she did make the comment of like, oh, you know, kids, haha, you're just playing a game. And then when she finally got to the she's like, kids, I don't like this game anymore. And so I think she just sort of went with it because yeah. she like would just thought they Maybe. were, you know, They're playing native. around. Is that how well, Earth? They, they gave that naive. Uh. She's naive. She's kind. So she just believes yeah. and trusts in people. No, right. exactly. Yeah. That's right. something. She right. doesn't, because there's diplomat. been no violence. So why would she expect violence the uh. immediately first thing, yeah. right? And then they... Uh, they never, I don't think, unless I missed it, I laughed too much in this movie, so I I missed dialogue, but they never explained why all of the different twins. They explained those two twins, kind of, but they didn't explain the rest of the they twins. Explained no, they explained that the children are allowed to wander in the ice fields until they are of age that they are useful. useful. Yeah, but they're so, all And then twins. you see them. I don't know if there's a reason why they're twins. Just a weird, like, weird, like, world building. Isn't yeah, obscure, that could have just been a yeah. coincidence. Twins, there's manta rays that are pulling dog sleds. Yeah. Like, just, so just weird get weird shit. right let's, off the bat. Let's it's get all as weird the as we can. There's Look something at, sci-fi-esque as twins. Twins and blue rabbits. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, it just gets yeah. weird. Those and, rabbits were cute. And then we get to the, the killer dolls. Oh my god! With the teeth, the chompers, uh, the big old chomp the, the chomp. Walls, the, what are they called? The, the Nutcracker dolls, the, the Nutcracker the nightmare dolls, fuel. The, the nightmare they had fuel. metal teeth. Yeah, that was horrifying. Were they Whoever actually came, metal? Like, they yeah. looked like they were metal teeth. I could tell if they were just like plastic, you know, with metal tape around them or not. So, oh, they looked metal. At this point, Jane Fonda has changed into her second outfit of the show. <laughs> Already, yeah. Uh, oh no, third, third. I apologize. Third, the third. Uh, the thing with Barbarella, which was really quite enjoyable, was Jane Fonda goes through an array, <clears throat> an array of rainbow of costumes, if you will. Which is fine. If this I was love that, it. If this I was love that, it. That movie, and I, this is why I, I kind of knew that was going to be a thing. Mm-hmm. And I thought of it as a, oh, this is a, you know, a women's power fantasy. No. Nope. Right? Because women like outfits. So I thought it'd be a women's power fantasy because different outfits is a cool thing. Hi, women of the show. Uh, Just just saying, we're going to do a podcast within a podcast. Welcome to the podcast. Uh, What is your favorite outfit? And do you like outfits as women on the show? I love outfits. Do you? Are you fans of outfits? Yep. Every day I wear outfits. Outfits. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for connecting with a podcast within a podcast. That came off very sarcastically, Amanda, but I know that you love talking about outfits and designing outfits. Don't get me wrong. Welcome to the Outfit Closet, a podcast within a podcast. I would 100% wear like five different outfits a day, and they would all be way over the top if that was even remotely societally acceptable. I didn't have to do laundry. I also would wear five outfits a day. (laughs) That too, yeah. Goddamn right. Nobody likes laundry. Um, thank you very much. That concludes podcast with the podcast mm, of outfits in the closet. Um, so we're on the ice planet. Barbarella's getting attacked by the killer she's dolls. Trapped in the like twins are like play with us, and then she's like, <laughs> that? and then yeah, they and they're they're big like you know. There's these classic 007, like Mister Bond, the laser beam is going to rip you apart, and this one's like Barbarella, the dolls will get you. It's like what? And there's just right. slow moving. No, dolls. the I fact, just... the thing about that scene that made it scary was that they just put the dolls down and started laughing with their teeth. That is yeah. true. And then Barbara's like, "Yeah, we're playing." And then she noticed they start just like just like oh, chomping. I expected to see them pan over and just see Jigsaw from fucking yeah. Sauce and then she's like, "Oh shit!" And then she started calling for help. Too late. Too late. Her outfit has already halfway been removed. Oh, yeah. yeah. And oh, it, is, it and is cold on the ice planet. That costume can never be worn again. Ever again. That <laughs> We're going to mark it up on the budget. But I think this was the first time when I went, oh, no, because... She was a damsel in distress with these um, with these puppets or these these dolls. Right. And someone else came to save her. A dude came to save her. I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah. And, you know, they got the whip cracking. The ah, child which, labor. Get the fuck well, out. Because when the whips crack, it's a children screaming. Yeah. Which that, is that's so a cool. Weird. So cool. Whip. Ah! Whip. <laughs> ah! Like fucking just <laughs> terrifying. And the kids literally freeze in terror. And then they shoot 
the biggest Nerf dart and it explodes into a net and then the kids just get dragged off scene. <laughs> and it's like, okay, I guess they're done. And if they never we, explain it. If only we <laughs> could deal no. with all children that way. Oh just shoot God, a giant right? Nerf dart at them and just, just drag them somewhere. Poof. And I love how Barbara is in this really tight, thin outfit. And this guy shows up like, I have been on this ice planet for a long time. And he's wearing full uh, like furs, like just... Head to toe, you can't it see an ounce of skin. It is literally a suit made of pure pubic hair. He has been <laughs> he on that ice planet double for fursuit. so long. It's all just fur. It's, fur, <laughs> it's, it's in between two furs. It is <laughs> oh, nice Do you imagine the fur just like matting with the other fur oh and like God. just braiding itself I close together? My, I close my eyes so, sometimes and imagine that. Well, it's so good. I don't well, know if people are quite envisioning what we're talking about because quickly after he saves Barbell, she's like, oh, how could I do to repay you? And he's like, you know what, woman? And she's like, oh, you want to do the hand touching sex with the pills? And he's like, nah, bitch. I want to get it on. So hang on just a quick second. Barbarella is in the far future where in modern society, they don't have sex. Mark Hand. That, they oh, that's the actor? take a pill no, that's the and then connect psionically and telepathically with their hands and emotions. And in which case, they make love. Yeah. And our uh, dashing hero comes to Barbarella's rescue and lays it down pretty straight. Hey, your ship has crashed. You need help. What can you do to repay me? I think she offers. She what offers. She, no, what she can offers. I do you're to right. You're me. right. She offers. She offers. She, she doesn't offers. offer sex per se. She doesn't but offer she sex. Offers something. She doesn't offer sex. She's like, I got stuff on my ship. What can we do? And he's just like, It's been so long. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> oh, my god. oh my god. I have oh. only fucked manta rays. Oh my god, manta. Yeah. Vibrating manta rays. I've Good, only, but they're not a woman. I've only I, fucked vibrating manta well, rays. Well, no. I fold my fursuit over and just fuck that, and sometimes it's warm. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <God. laughs> all right, all right, all right. We'll come back to you, Nintendo Geek. So uh, he lays her down, and the the fur, the fur, uh, the fuck sled. Okay, first of all, the it's a sled. sled. The, it's a fuck sled, but I love that he's. What a not fun steering. Scene. Who's steering the sled? Who no. cares? No. Okay. He's... No, no, no. I, th- I was right. Okay. So she does offer that her government will certainly provide him with recom... Wow. Okay. Well, I'm not going to start quoting her. Basically saying that uh, because she's on a government mission that she will make sure that he gets compensated because her government will help yeah. with like costs. And then... He's like, she's like, is there anything else I can do for you? Because my government will pay you. And then he's like, well, there's one thing. And she's like, they haven't done that for years. But I guess, you know, because she's never done it. Right. Right. So she doesn't understand 100% like what she's getting into. (laughs) I do find it funny. This guy's like, I have a snow sail. And you're like, okay, I, we will ride the the sail. And then you get in, she gets her into the sail and... He can't see where he's going. But he knows where he's going to come. <laughs> of course he does. hey yo. But I do find it funny that, you know, she's like, okay. She's, at first she's like, no, what? No, no. What? Sexual intercourse? No, no, that's not a thing we do. No. Here's the pills. And he's just like, well, that's what I want. And she goes, well, okay. <laughs> like, it didn't take much to convince her. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, it's a, on a budget. And they don't. Have I much, think she was trying time. to stay, like, still within, like, the power role in that situation. Being like, well, I guess if you want that. Like, making him oh, seem like, right. oh, if that's what you want. But in my world, that's what, like, you know. Primitives do. Yeah, like, primitives. The poor people. Yeah. Exactly. There's a power fantasy. So she's too, still right? trying yeah. to keep the high ground. You're right. right. You're right. You're right. Because when she gets out of there. After uh, she changes to her fifth outfit, uh, <laughs> and he takes off... It's the fourth one. The Chewbacca the outfit. He takes off the Chewbacca costume to put back on the Chewbacca costume. So he, this guy takes off this big fur one leather the jacket. the hairiest men And we've he's seen just on got camera. a chest of hair. Oh, my God. It's a rug on top of a rug. Who, who is that actor, anyway? I want to look up Mark. what porn he's in next. Uh, so oh, God. They bang. It's great. They don't really allude to it. We don't see it. We get a great action shot. Mark, of... Mark Hand. Hugo Tognazzi. So we get a great action. We get a very, not even an action shot, just pretty much Jane Fonda posing 
slowly, sexily uh, getting up. And you, she's bending and curving, and she's kind of slowly it's behind stretching. Like a, like a, you get a silhouette, a, silhouette, a very yeah. a, a cloudy silhouette of Jane Fonda's body, and then she gets out fully dressed in almost like a skunk costume. We all kind of laugh. <laughs> yeah. She's got yeah. this giant tail, and you made the remark that she kept getting uh, the tail caught on set and indoors and stuff. And she kind of is either really into it, but also very much trying to play the I don't give a shit. Yeah. The oh, are you not done with the ship yet? Like bored. Yeah. Right? Like, oh, yeah, that was... Like, it was good, but also, whatever kind of thing. And I, you're right. The power the power play is so strong there. Mm-hmm. I you're enjoyed 100% the scene right on that. where the sails are like a, like a plasticky tubular yeah, yeah. type shape. And they're kind of like tendril Like claws type. almost. The claws, yeah. yeah. And I absolutely adore that at the start of the sex scene, the, it extends and grows. You can One say might, it inflates. It inflates. Or it engorges, and then as the sex scene comes to an end, this subje- this it's clearly not directly showing the sex, but it's clearly implying the sex. Yeah, there's no showing... penetration at all in this film. As much as we're laughing at it, it's like South Park porn. We we it's there's some nipples and some ass. Yeah, that's pretty much what right. You get. That's about it. And this ship, they're like, we will get you to a ship right away, and then immediately it just starts sailing in circles. He's doing figure eights. He's doing figure eights yeah. and just moving around the field doing nothing while yeah. they're having the sex scene. Well, they're getting to the the ship. It's so far away, and the weather has gotten terrible. Oh yeah, baby, it's cold outside. <laughs> and then right after the sex scene, the, the sails Ugh. deflate because they've arrived. <laughs> I'm like, oh, right. my oh, God. my God. Oh, Ugh. this is too much. It, it is. It's a little cringe worthy. It's, uh, it's a it's like the thing is, is if you go into it, not necessarily looking at like, the cringe aspect of it, but just also the excuse me, um, barely consenting adults. In yeah. a way, like it's that's where it gets cringy because she's kind of not into it the entire time. But also it's like. It's a movie. It's Jane Fonda being the... sexy, and the whole film is kind of like no one's consenting, and also being like, "Hey, Barbarella, you need something. Lay flat on the bed." And it's yeah. like, Jesus Christ! Like there is a little bit like you guys made the the joke of like the starfish bit. Where yeah, it's like, oh, yeah. yeah. She there's literally just bit, sort of laid back and starfish. There's a few scenes where it is just kind of like I get what they're going for or trying to go for but ultimately it just kind of does rub not rub you the wrong way or the right way even for that matter with this <laughs> film well think about it she was playing like the the high card there being like oh i guess if you want to do it and she's maybe read about it but not or heard stories or rumors. yeah but she think about it, like she's like essentially like a virgin in that way so like she just was like, okay, and this is what happens. We like lay on the bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we lay on top of each other. So <laughs> of course she would like lay down and be like, vibrate like a hey, fucking... <laughs> like a manta ray. <laughs> like, a manta ray. <laughs> like okay, like I'm 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 in the position. Assume right? the sex position. <laughs> yep, yep. So I guess, like think yeah. about it that way. She's like a very like a uh, what I've what I've seen her described as is very like naive in those senses. Yeah, but that theme keeps popping up too, though, because. I mean, this is jumping way ahead, but but Birdman, he when he ends up in with uh, the the Empress there, he just sort of like starfishes on the ground too because he doesn't know what the fuck to do. The angel. The angel. The angel. So I do. So this guy so that she just has planet, sex with right. fixes this. She, he fixes her ship for her. Okay. And then she immediately goes to try and leave the planet. He barely fixes it. He barely. He literally walks it. up and goes, "All fixed." Yeah. And then it's like. <laughs> Is, are you sure? And he's like, trust me, I'm a trapper. I've been a trapper for years. I've been trapped on this ice planet, trap, trapping trappers. I'm a trapper. And I fixed your ship. And then she's like, all right, well, that was fun. And I got to get the fuck away from you, you creep. And then she <laughs> gets in the ship. Her tail gets caught in the thing. Yeah, and we have I these very comedic scene. moments of like her being like, I gotta, I love this. I got to get, get this fucking suit off me and I need to shower. And then she immediately takes off. And guess what? He didn't tra- fix the fucking ship and it immediately crashes. No, uh, when she goes to take off, like you said, uh, the the Magmas grabs her ship. Oh. Because yeah. it's all red. And then she's like, oh my God, it's getting hot because yeah. this entity has her ship. The friction. And is dragging her down. The science friction. And that's where she lands Amazing. in the labyrinth. <laughs> so, yes. Barbarella... Do we get the name of her ship? 
I don't think your ship, ship has a name. A name. No, I, don't a ship. I don't know. So I want to know Barbara at this Gr- point. No, not not once yet. At this point, have I guess they they did say more or less the final villain was Durand Durand. Well, we're not quite sure. She's after Durand Durand, but then they start alluding once she lands on the labyrinth of Night City. Yeah, so it's Sago. Only then that they start talking about the, the supreme, the, the supreme, supreme tyrant, 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 the supreme tyrant, the oh, supreme tyrant. That's what it was. Yeah, the yeah. great tyrant, the, the great tyrant, supreme tyrant, great tyrant, the tyrant. It's got a few names. Yeah. Big old tyrant. But they don't really mention this tyrant figure until now. Yeah. Yeah. And they talk about how there's this labyrinth, which is a, I don't, I'm assuming it's a map painting or something like that. It looks like it. But it was cool. It, was it the, looks this, like it. it and they built cool. a lot of it, though. Yeah. For a map painting, they built a lot, a lot of it. So I would assume for the wide shots, a lot of that was map painting, especially with the ship and the, yep. the different, uh, the, the, the very poorly, uh, what is it? The, Sky ships from Cloud City, the cloud, the yeah. cloud sails uh, that are flying around trying to shoot them down later on is all done on the mat. Yeah. yeah, but but uh, they they did this great thing where you show you kind of it, it was pretty impressive. They had the they could see humans walking in the near screen in the labyrinth, right. and it was exactly that a labyrinth, and it kind of slowly I don't want to say panned up because it didn't pan. It just showed this. No, there was one scene. shot. One there scene. was one <laughs> shot. Where it showed the whole labyrinth all the way up to this evil castle type of thing, this evil science science fiction castle, and it was kind of cool. It had this huge shot, but you could still see people in the bottom part of the thing, <laughs> which clearly implies a map painting. But it was pretty impressive for the yeah. Know, so to lay that thick lore drop on you all, get ready for the lore dump of the dump truck, the Tonka Tonka lore dump. <laughs> uh, the labyrinth was labyrinth built upon and constructed by the innocent and the full hearted. Yes. So as they are walking through, we get this wide shot. Actually, no, I shouldn't even say wide shot. We get the same shot of uh, people and body parts and different uh, perspectives of human anatomy fused uh, poorly. Poorly. Uh, what is integrated. it? Integrated. Integrated. I would say plastered. Yeah. Plastered were- into the walls. And there's people walking around nude or within clothing that is completely. Uh, crumbling off of them everyone looks very uh not decrepit but gaunt yeah in a way yeah. everyone's very gaunt because they've just been trapped in this huge labyrinth and then eventually and kind of become lost. lost and then they become part of the maze yeah which I, is a crazy great idea it's a really cool idea obviously it was the predecessor to the D- flying dutchman from uh, pirates of the caribbean part of the crew part of the ship oh yeah, yo ho. Yeah, it yeah. I I know those movies. Do- oh wait, do I get to do the bit? You get to do you the get bit. To do the bit. What? You've never watched Pirates of the Caribbean? I've seen a couple of them. <laughs> I just have. I don't know them as well as you guys do. I think one of our first dates was the second Pirates of the Caribbean. It was Did we see Pirates of the Caribbean at all? Or was that before us? Our first date was Twilight, and I'll never forget. Oh. That. oh. That's yeah. a movie that I haven't seen that I don't want to see, and we're not doing the bit for that. You what? haven't seen Twilight? Oh, here we go. No, welcome I've to the, never old, seen the, the wife Twilight. episode of Raised by Spoilers, <laughs> where Amanda and Amanda tackle oh, the entire problematic no, Twilight I franchise. Have, I have opinions. Can we not? Oh, they'll unbreak so, it. <laughs> they'll drink wine, and they'll swear at each other. <laughs> and they'll remember Robert Pattinson can be a good actor. <laughs> Uh, right, and Kirsten Stewart will steal your woman. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I like her. Uh, we all do. So they're in this labyrinth, and they she immediately kind of falls unconscious as she gets out of her ship that's re crashed into the labyrinth, and the rocks fall her and knocks her out. And immediately, the first thing that happens is someone grabs her tits while she's unconscious on the ground. Turns out it's an innocent mistake. It's a blind angel. <laughs> Not oh, he did say he was an angel. He did. Well, he said he, he was... had a more technical name, yeah. uh, but yeah. then uh, do- or Professor Ping called him an angel. Yeah, and was then he Ping referred to himself as an Ping. angel later. So okay, but he's an angel that has lost the will to fly. He did lose mm, the will. He to fly. did. Uh, gorgeous blonde, let's say six foot man. He skipped leg day. Yeah, he like, was very every very... leg day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all of the leg days. Uh, and he, you could assume that because he was been, he's been walking for so long through the labyrinth. 
Oh, he's becoming gaunt. Ah, ah. It's the word of the day, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so yeah, she, he meets her um, and he kind of gets her an introduction to the labyrinth. And I was kind of reminded of uh, Snowpiercer at this point where there's the wise old man in the labyrinth. And then the train comes crashing through the <laughs> yeah. fucking labyrinth. The Doc and Brown? Everyone tells no. you to get on. You no, know, John Hurt plays this character who's kind of at the back of the... The Obi-Wan Kenobi character. The Obi-Wan Kenobi character, but he's this saddened leader. Six foot four. Wow. He wow, didn't. He's pretty... That's as tall as I am. Um, so he... Yeah, I'm six foot four. Um, <laughs> so Holy shit, do you lift? Because that was a hell of a flex. No, nah, not really. Okay, come on. Keep going with the fucking story. <laughs> You're like, holy fuck, dude. Well, she gave me a weird look. Uh, like, I shouldn't believe me. So. <laughs> <laughs> I need to see compare. Okay, okay. In all fairness, everybody's oh, tall to Amanda. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, for record, I'm 5'2". <laughs> <laughs> Make a timestamp. We're cutting yeah. all of that out. <laughs> <laughs> so we have this uh, hilarious moment where he goes, meets this, like, wizened wizard old man of the labyrinth. And it turns out everyone in the labyrinth is good because if you're evil, they feed you to the liquid. If you're good, the liquid doesn't want you. So they send you to the labyrinth to die a horrible slow death or become part of the labyrinth. Which is weird because I honestly thought it was the other way around. The liquid I've... feeds off of negative energy. Yeah. So they want to keep the negative people in there. Oh, I took it and as they literally like feed the No, they people. feed off the energy. Oh. So the more shitty you are, you stay in the capital. That's why the tyrant pushed all the good people out. Got it. Wow. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Okay. So right. they, they clearly there's this divide and it's classic story. It's no different than many of the stories we tell today. The divide of, mm-hmm. uh, you know. A, a woman in her outfits. Yeah, I, again, she's in another outfit. She did already. change another outfit. I think this one was. I think at this point she was in my favorite outfit. The, the chainmail. The chainmail. Oh, no, no, like, no, no. Like, she, 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 she fucks the. Uh, she fucks the angel. What outfit was she in on this one? Then? She was in the crash landing. The white um, bodysuit with the straps, with the leg straps. Leg straps. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the she leg changes. Straps. We go from that. leg straps. We go from white silvery leg straps. Uh, almost like a, a vinyl outfit to the labyrinth. We meet the cast of characters and the parts of the resistance. And then we meet the angel. Yes. They, they bang. And then we have a hard cut where she changes the outfit. And he's just <laughs> flying being like, I don't know what it was, but all of my emotion was backed up. And it's like, <laughs> what the fuck? I just needed re- emotional release. release. Yeah. Yeah. So suddenly she gives him the... So I thought bad. you had a comment. Oh my god! Oh <laughs> You're my trying to god. die. Okay. So like before we move on, uh, with Professor Ping, uh, the one who she asked uh, to fix her ship again, because uh, that... apparently the first guy didn't do it. It was the same. She describes it as no. the exact same problem too. He yeah. literally hey, is it's like, this hole it's... on the side of my ship. Yeah. So there's these giant blast holes, and I can't figure out why it won't fly. Uh, an interesting fact about the actor of Marcel Marcoux, uh, he is actually a mime actor. What? And this is his first role. Now, I've read two different stories where it's either this is his first speaking role, and it's actually his voice. But then I've also read another article where it says that it's a dub of another person's voice. Oh. So it might have, huh. you know, kept his integrity as a silent actor or not. I couldn't really find like a... There was like two sides two to it. Two stories. Yeah. But I, he's I, actually a mime actor, which is kind of interesting because he is kind of like a... like a, What would you say? Like unconventionally... I would say squirrely. Yeah. He was oh, kind yeah. of just oh, like, yeah, yeah. He's like, he's definitely a ca- he's definitely a character. Right. Oh yeah. So they yeah. got they got some weird they got some weird cast of characters <laughs> on this this crew. They really do. I forgot to talk about I do like the idea that uh they Sounds like you like this movie. I liked part I no no, I liked it as in it was like hilarious. It was, okay. I did not like the movie. It was terribly structured. Um but I take each piece and they're kind of funny and entertaining, but yeah. that doesn't make it a good movie. Sure. So they have this character who's kind of squirrely and they have all these characters who are not 
um, not Earthling, so they don't speak English, and she goes through a bunch of different languages, and she which keeps was tra- cool. Which she tries that little like wrist thing that allows you to translate, so mm-hmm. on and so forth. But the thing is, is it auto translates like Google translates, so everyone's still talking out of sync as if they're talking their mm-hmm. language, but they're being dubbed over, right? Which is super interesting that they thought that this is a borderline porn movie, and they thought about that. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I feel like that sort of went away towards the end of the movie. Like they kept that theme for when she first arrived in the planet and i feel like later on that went away because everybody's lip syncing and voices like True. actually lined up later on so but they did think of it in the beginning which was interesting that is so true. jane fonda did what all of the french lines one for her own dubbing she like, did what sorry she's bilingual she, she did all of her own lines in french oh, oh wow cool. good for her uh, because it's such a european film i want to say that it was probably done in one typical language and yep. then multi-dubbed. Mm. That makes sense. Or they did multiple takes. And then the problem is, is a lot of that gets cut or missed. Yeah. On the editing floor of what works and what doesn't work. Mm. And then they just kind of say, fuck it. Dub over it. And we'll bring the movie back in. And we'll dub over because we need one for Spanish. We need one for France. We need for, or, uh, French, Italian, Spanish, like all of those other ones. And that's where it kind of starts to get lost. Within, that makes sense. Within it. So they eventually the guy who has now released his emotional bonds and has grown the courage sorry the angel the angel uh who never wears a shirt which is totally fine it's totally fitting for this nobody wears a fucking shirt no, in this movie yeah nobody wears, nobody, nobody, nobody wears a shirt oh uh, the guy in shirt's the, optional i almost cut a hole out of my one of my shirts and wore it over <laughs> <laughs> am i the only one that also thought of road uh not road warrior the fury road with the guy who the, i think he was bullet town leader and he had like just his nipples cut oh, out of his shirt yeah with his um so a lot of their outfits were like that so this guy now go grown the courage he can now fly out of the labyrinth and fly up to the main evil city. Which is the best. Because Jane Fonda, Barbarella, is literally like, alright, great, you can fly. I manipulated you. Let's fly to the city. And he looks at her, even though she's he's blind, and goes, they'll shoot me out of this fucking sky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, good, let's do it anyway. And it's like... Oh my god! I don't believe in violence, oh but I've got god. a rocket launcher. What does so that good. even mean? <laughs> They'll fucking shoot me out of the sky! <laughs> oh my god! So they fly, and guess what happens? He gets shot out of the sky. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> he gets shot out of the sky. Uh, Duran Duran and the evil tyrant, or the great tyrant, sends out the black guard uh, in their almost sort of weird Tie Fighter ships. Yeah, and they yeah. shoot the angel and Barbarella out of the sky. And then they fall and fall and crash. No, what? No, he catches her. He catches her, but then they end up landing and then Duran Duran catches them. No, they shoot all of the ships. She shoots all of the ships where he, she's like, this blind angel is flying. She's like, I'll be your left, eyes. Right. Left. I think my favorite pew, warning pew. was, I think my favorite warning was, watch out. Yeah. Over and, there. And, like Over there. Watch out yeah. for what? You need Which, to be more descriptive than that. I'm blind. Jane yeah. yells over there. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> it's brutal. But it's then great. they land. They blow up all the ships. That was an intense. I had no idea what was going on. Like I got the feeling of the scene. Clearly, there was supposed to be more of a struggle. But the music was very Barry Mandalow. And it was supposed to be like an intense action scene. It was very Tom Jones even. Tom like, we Jones. We just had this very slapping bass scene like yeah. line as all hell's breaking loose <laughs> which was just hilarious finally they kill all of them and they land i don't even remember what happens next after that duran duran shows up uh, yeah. no at no. the time jump he in, is please. The, jump in. at the time he is still a concierge we don't know oh right yeah he's, he's the, concierge. the concierge so what he happens shows next up. uh they show up in the castle and they go through to and then she immediately starts asking, you know, as the undercover agent she is, <laughs> do you know where Duran Duran is? Or like, you know, she she immediately starts asking, and it's like, wait, what? And they're just all evil, and they just see like a pure angel because he already warned her, being like, hey, an angel like in the city isn't really a thing. And she's like, no, it'll be fine. Right. Because we oh. get the scene where the guy, oh, yeah. the road warriors, are checking her out, and they go yeah. to almost rape her. 
Yeah, I totally forgot like, about that whole thing. That was actually before the concierge. Yeah, shows up. that was before yeah. the concierge shows up. You're 100 percent right. Please, because we don't know the plot. Take us they, on this journey. They take they take uh, Pygar away. They do take Pygar the angel, and then they take her down like the slope and into the inflatable pillow room. Yes, and yes. that's where we meet the one-eyed rogue. Vixen. Yeah, like I loved the, her with the spinning knives and the eye patch, and who keeps calling yeah. her. The pretty 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 pretty. pretty, pretty. pretty, pretty. pretty, pretty. I love this character. Teeth. Hello, my pretty pretty. Pretty pretty. 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 <laughs> I loved her. I loved the spinning blade. She was so baller. Her outfit was kind of was this like roguish, sexy. She kind of reminded me of like a a Riddick kind of character. Yeah, yeah. I feel like yeah. she belonged in Mortal Kombat it more than anything. The True. outfit because Barbarella earlier in the movie had the ab window that had the like her window. like belly button showing. But this outfit was like below the be- belly button, above like I'm gonna say she- the pubic mound. <laughs> <laughs> wow! There yeah, like, it is. and it was just like, oh, okay, you're like a brunette. You're like a brunette <laughs> with an <laughs> eye patch, a dominant lesbian. And we've brunette. just seen yeah. Barbarella running around as like the like the blonde like bombshell and it's like oh you're like the complete opposite the com- hello yes right yep right they very much made that very clear that those two are two sides of the co- of the same coin mm-hmm. yeah right yeah. and that the devilish rogue is after barbarella's goodies yeah oh yeah that was made very clear very quickly it made very clear she's into that into the the uh the utensils of cutting paper right <laughs> so she denies the help of the rogue Yes. And flees the scene looking for... And then, no, no, no. The the devilish rogue spins her like blade and goes to like, I could throw this at you. I could kill you. And then it. palms it. And it's like, oh. <laughs> yeah. She, she had a moment of, oh, I'll leave you for now. Yeah. For now. She could have had her, but she's like, I'll let you go. I'm just curious, right? The next scene was kind of cool where they were almost creepishly worshiping or betting on who would kill the blind angel it was ritualistic in a way but also it seemed like evil betting because they like the angel weird, was just sitting there weird fight club not quite torture not quite betting not quite like the ritual sacrifice that would play out yeah but they were just kind of amping each other up of who's going to bleed him first yeah and they're all kind of sitting there playing with him plucking feathers right and he's just blind and going what he's He's just trying trying to push people away touching people's faces a lot of face touching touching you um sweet caroline (laughs) so they're just he's just reaching out and that's when barbell waves at him goes (laughs) <laughs> over Pisces. <here. laughs> over no Pisces. Whatever. What is Pygar? Pygar. Pygar. Thank you, Amanda. Please jump in at any point if we get anything wrong. No, you're, you're doing a great job. Human. I, I can. I'm watching you go. Like, <laughs> <laughs> There's no fear. No, you're good. You're doing good. Pygar. But it, Pygar. it felt very ritualistic, which was cool. It was this weird scene where at first it was this. I thought they were worshiping him at first, but well, then they- it clearly, slowly was evolving into. It was ritualistic, but no, they were going to kill him. And they was just taking their time. They're trying to do the most evilest thing they can. And they're kind of jumping around, scaring him. Yeah. And in a weird try to way, like hyping up the group because then there is more energy. Yeah. And right. So if they feed off of the whole... It, it reminds me, honestly, if we can go on a little segue here. It reminds me a lot of uh, Batman and Robin where we get the titular scene where uh, Robin steals the Batmobile and we get that whole black light scene where he's clearly out of his league and they all try to beat him up. Oh, you're talking Sh- Schumacher. I'm talking Schumacher, the best Batman film. Um, <laughs> and uh, Robin's just kind of clearly out of his league and then uh, Bruce swoops in and adopts him as like a weird older gay father to be like, yo, <laughs> don't ever steal my car again. And a lot of that was transpired and inspired by Barbarella's let's torture an angel and maybe stab him with a dirty knife. And then Barbarella swoops in to save the day. And adopts her... her, her I don't know where I was going with that. (laughs) So anyway, in walks Barbarella. I mean, she did sleep with him, so... Step what angel? You... Hold on, hold on. Ah. Whoa! What? Angels don't make love; they are love. Oh, that line! 
so good. I was holding that off to be the closure of this episode. I got a great well, story. Too late. I'm sitting on for this. So yeah. So they immediately she saves them and she kind of pulls them back into this cave hole. No, no, you missed the point that she stashed a gun in his underwear. Right. Right. right yeah. Next to his dick. Check yeah. Off, check off's dick gun. Hold that between them, sweet, sweet cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, Pie guard. then the concierge comes around being like. It's a not loaded gun. This is useless. Well, well this was even before that. No, yeah. because we get, don't we get the birds first? Well, no, you forget about no, no, the suicide the room. The suicide room. The suicide room. The How could I forget the suicide, suicide room? room where also, like the chicks are there, but basically went to go in to kill herself. And they're like, oh, okay, we could choose three different modes of death. And if we don't choose, the slime eats us. The, sli- okay. the gelatinous slime eats us. So Paizo and Barbarella walk into the suicide <laughs> room and all shit's about to go down. Pygar, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to call him the Pathfinder Company. Yeah, thanks. So, <laughs> thanks for insulting my favorite tabletop He's a RPG. handsome angel. So uh, <laughs> Pygar, uh, Barbarella, immediately spin around as the woman just gets shredded. And one of the best ones is she has second guesses and regrets. Yeah. And the door swings down and smacks her in the ass. And she just kind of goes, ah, and dies. Yeah. Yep. And it's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, I wasn't in the room for that scene. Yeah, it was horrifying. Oh, yeah. We all sat, draws were on the floor. Oh, and so just I, jumped, like, <gasps> I jumped the gun with the, the angel gun pulling. I apologize. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So they... They get brought to <clears throat> the. That's the when the chance. Yeah, his the, name? Concierge the concierge comes in. Concierge, the concierge shows up. Everyone's got secret names. <laughs> this yeah. is a very secret name kind of show. Yeah, yeah. I I just don't remember names very well. I well, remember because they're titles. secrets. Because yeah. they're secrets. Yeah, secret names. <laughs> It, what concierge, does, the concierge. Right, right. So the concierge brings them to meet the tyrant. Right, the great, tyrant. the great tyrant. Turns out the great tyrant is not Duran Duran because Duran Duran is a dude, and the great tyrant turns out to be the lady with the eye patch, devilish rogue, devilish rogue, but without the eye patch. She grew an eye back, she, and it's a miracle. Okay, the science outfit. friction. Science friction. <laughs> Yeah, her outfit. What? Final Fantasy Tactics, ladies and gentlemen. Adam um, is Googling his porn history. And does that not look like her outfit? <laughs> what are you fucking no, talking about? No, she was wearing like, no. like the Victoria's horn Secret lingerie. No, no. Look what? up. She what had this like that? feathered oh, the black horn. outfit okay, with this yeah. unicorn horn on her head. Sure, the outfit not even remotely. And it was this, the horn, I guess. No, but it was like, it was like a... A, a dress ladies and gentlemen welcome back to podcast on a podcast mm. where we talk about outfits uh <laughs> no bring it back up we're in the po- oh, we're in a podcast on the podcast um we're looking at final fantasy tactics uh the summoner's outfit right now she is lion wars specifically lion wars i apologize thank you do you want to take this one no, no, I, okay. I got this. uh she's got a red unicorn horn or a manatee stinger <laughs> <laughs> And a very... I don't see it. I don't see. I get. I, she's got a. I yeah. don't. I don't see it. I. It was. It's either that or yeah. it reminds me of the Monster Hunter outfit. That's. It's okay. So it's a lot of. Well, how would you describe it? It's just. It's. How would you guys describe it? Like literally the Victoria's Secret like angels that they do that walk down the runway with the big wings. It's okay. like that, but the feathers are on her bra. And she's got a unicorn horn. Yeah, she's got a unicorn. Horn. And it's made of plastic, or is it see through mesh? Uh, no, it's plastic. It's, like a plastic. it's solid. It's, it's mainly like a... plastic. Okay, so keep in mind, the 68, the, the main theme was recyclable material, and a lot of it was recycled hair. Uh, well, that was honestly, a joke. <laughs> oh. No, it's all plastic was, and what? metals. and Probably my Why? second favorite. I was... That's weird. It was very... Oh, I love that. Very... Attri- what the heck is that's this? The, that's that... the rogue outfit. Is it really? It's full bush. Wow. So it goes under the pubic mo- the, the mound. Pubic I was mound. not lying. Wow. Oh, the actually, costumes in this are rad. They're I rad. So aggressive. This outfit <laughs> of the yeah. Great Tyrant was quite really, really nice. I know it's probably one of your favorites because it was all feathers. Absolutely. Um, I she look it, it did well for her. You would love Vegas or New Orleans. <laughs> yeah probably a lot of feathers yeah <clears throat> but it was really cool and they clearly had this juxtaposition where the great tyrant was also a very attractive but kind of dominant female yep um cutthroat even cutthroat even oh one might say she was a tyrant <laughs> she was <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. whereas barbarella was wearing white in that scene and she's right. wearing black in that scene which was very clear it 
it's kind of funny that they had this borderline porn, but that they're very they understood the concept of white good, <coughs> black evil. Put them aside. Oh, you get the idea that they are mirrored. Now make them keys. Now make them keys. She's oh my very... god, that kiss would be all teeth. Because Jane Fonda is like all upper teeth, and that woman was just all teeth in general, and there would just be teeth everywhere. I, I'm willing to. I think I'm everybody. To I think everybody here is fine with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm willing okay. to gamble. That's okay. Uh, that is fine. So basically, the the tyrant can't get Barbarella into it because clearly Barbarella probably isn't into females. I think the difference too, though, is there's a little. What, the, I don't know. Cat, did the cat get in the room? What the no. hell is that? <laughs> so, um, I think a little bit of that was the tyrant getting whatever the fuck she wants. True. Sure. Mm, yeah, and yeah. that, wait a minute, what do you mean you resist me? The yeah. Ming the Merciless. Yes, right? yeah, yeah. Wait yeah. a minute. No. I am the fucking supreme leader here. You don't get to say no. Yes. Right? And that's where we get to the scene where the angel is pinned to the floor. Which, not pinned to the floor, he was crucified upwards, which was a fantastic, like, a fantastic image. That was fantastic. You know, it's a better image with feathers where Barbarella goes to the torture chamber of budgies. Yeah. The torture chamber of budgies. So the angel. And finches, apparently. The yeah, angel basically won't canaries. necessarily. Have oh, were they can- Sorry, my bad. Both. Mind. All of it. Finches, canaries, budgies. The angel has sex, air quotes. He starfishes on the ground while the tyrant has sex with him. Do- no, because he can't get it up. That's why she's so fucking angry. Oh, is that what that was she all about? She literally is. She goes into a full on rage. And that's where we get the speech about like an angel. What, what is it? An angel an, is love. An angel doesn't make love. An yeah. angel is love. And so, then it never implies that he does or doesn't. So he is soft as balsa wood right there. Laying <laughs> See, flat I, took on it, the floor. <laughs> I took it as she basically just raped him. Now, whether or not that means he got up or not is a different question. I mean, she, I think she boots him out to her like to the like the people outside and then she goes into her chamber of dreams i didn't see the unicorn to dream about him maybe maybe (laughs) so where whereas barbarella as you mentioned gets put into a bird cage yeah a bird cage full of uh, what 200 300 birds budgies finches, canaries and they proceed to rip her clothes off oh and and poop in her hair poop in her hair and peck everywhere and it, at first, is horrifying. And then you kind of realize that the birds aren't really doing anything. And they're just kind of quietly landing on her. <laughs> yep. And it's adorable. <laughs> yeah. They're just perching they're on just her. They're just like, hey. <laughs> they're trying to make it scary, but they're just perching yeah, on her. Jane Fonda is acting her ass off in this scene because she's sort of trying not to laugh, <laughs> also giggle, and be like, no, stop. Ah. And there's just fucking birds everywhere. And it's just, it's scary if you're not in the birds. And it's hilarious if you are in a birds because it honestly looked like the the big glass coffins they'd put you in and then they'd fire a cannon of money at you and whatever you can catch is yours yeah. if you get collect a certain amount. And that was full of uh very cheap end of life pet store birds. Oh yeah. I, see all I could think of was it felt like the equivalent of if you wanted to torture 007 and you shoved him in a small room with a bunch of kittens. Yeah, we got kittens. And it was just adorable. And he's just like, no! And But he was trying his hardest to act as if it's terrible. But it's kittens going, meow, and just pouncing on it. was. I don't. I find birds fairly cute. Most birds. <laughs> but so I, it, was just, it was just hilarious and cute to me. I'm like, oh, they're adorable. <laughs> oh, Dr. No had the chamber full of tarantulas. Well, we amped up our game, 007. <laughs> Get your tight little ass in the pocket cobra room. And it's like, oh, no. <laughs> And then basically you're not expecting it, but suddenly the floor opens up underneath her and she goes snakes and laddering down a a chute. To we discover the entire city is made and built off of trap doors. And tubes. Tubes. Lots of tubes. Tubes and trap doors. It's all trap doors. And And there's one in the prison. The warp zone, if you will. And (laughs) she didn't even blow the whistle. I absolutely, this next scene was my favorite in the whole movie. And is so good. It's a secret. Nintendo Geek. What is this guy's this... actual name? Uh, you're talking about Dildano. Commander. Commander Dildo. Commander he's Dildo. the uh, he's like the commander of the the uh, resistance that we are just introduced to, and I think there's 30 minutes left in the movie. <laughs> yeah. It. I just love this entire scene. Is a bumbling fools. 
he where he the you know, mushroom cut the mustache the mushroom cut he's a goofy he looks looking like my guy. Elden Ring character <laughs> <laughs> I the same thing. amazing oh. fuck and I just love the immediately it sets the tone for the scene where he's calling everything secret like the secret door the secret key and at first it's kind of taken seriously because the things he's saying the secret tunnels makes sense and then slowly as the scene progresses he's like quick I've got your secret outfit. Here, here's your secret necklace. Go behind I'll the secret it, wall. Go behind the secret wall. I'll put it around your secret neck. And you realize that it's getting, he just calls everything secret. And I yeah. love that growth throughout where you're like, is this a thing? And He's then he, convinced himself <laughs> that it's important. And if he tells enough people that it's important, they'll start believing. And there's a level of me that they went, oh, he's the leader of the resistance. I went, is he just insane? And he thinks he's the leader. Turns out he actually is. No, he's the secret leader. He's the secret leader. Yeah. But I do love that there is the, the like, one of the humans, one of the other resistance guys goes, I, all right, leave. He goes, yes, through the tunnel. And then he activates the tunnel switch and it doesn't work. And he tries it once. And then the handle breaks on it. <laughs> and then he goes, Everything is going wrong. And then he's like, Everything's going the wrong. Door. The door. The door. The door. The door. Yeah, the door. Here's the door. Here's the door. Please. <laughs> God. Ah. Uh, in which case, Barbarella says... Well, what can I do to repay you for saving my life from the room full of deadly birds? <laughs> and he looks at her dead in the eyes and goes, squish, squish. And what he actually means is he wants to experience something he's never experienced before. And then he frantically looks through the entire fucking room <laughs> for the magic pill. For the yep. secret pills. For the, for pill. the secret pills. For the pills. And he wants to experience earth sex. Modern earth sex. Cutting edge or sex. And Jane or Barbarella is at this point being like, fuck that. And <laughs> lays down and immediately starts like taking some of her outfit off. Well, because she's basically fucked her way to this position using unearthly methods. Right. right. And right. he's like, oh, no, no, I don't want that. It's barbaric. What are you kidding me? I'm well, not she landed and then everyone just started expecting that of her. So she's like, I guess. I thought it Wait, was. You don't great. pay with things with for money. It's like no, we don't pay for things with money. <laughs> <laughs> what the fucking kind of society is this? I I loved that twist that we were all expecting it. Barbarella was expecting it, and then he just flicked the he flips the it, switch. and then we go into a great scene, a, a great real great scene, real awkward scene of them playing internal pong with each other's internal bits. Yeah, they literally just sit there and vibrate. With their hands hold and with their hands against touching. each other. Yeah. And I'm not 100% sure how much of that was from the comic. Oh, I'm sure some of it was. But just for the way that was shot. with the, It was wide and then it zooms in really quick in a way. Uh, and then they just lock eyes. And her hair starts to get flustered and then curls in slow motion or in stop motion. And then he is still vibrating and she's kind of just done with him. <laughs> yeah. and bored and then she touches his hands again and it just starts smoking <laughs> and he continues to vibrate and almost get more and more violent and yeah. then the guy walks in this general the, the general or the second in command walks in and is like what the fuck and she's just like oh hey sorry yeah uh. and he still has his hand out yeah, vibrating like, just going and she kind of takes his hand off she kind of takes her hands off looks at the general can I like can I help you and what he's like uh I'll wait Okay. And then she goes and puts her hand well, back goes, on. She looks at him and goes, oh, sorry, you're not done. And then she puts her hand back up and it's like, ooh. Oh. <laughs> Nintendo Geek, you get something. Uh, it's funny because they had an Italian actor uh, originally cast for him. Uh, and it was during that scene that he was kind of like uh, screen testing. And he actually took that scene too seriously. Oh, God. So they replaced him with this guy, uh, David Hemmings. For a more comedic aspect of it. Oh, he he nailed the comedy. Yeah. He feels very Monty Python. Yeah. Like yeah. his yeah. skit type and like his energy feels very Monty Python, right. which is and, funny. Yeah. And you could probably tell that he was making the crew laugh and there was a little bit of like, oh, hey, yeah. everybody, we're making the science fiction movie. This is bonkers. Everyone's in crazy costumes. Let's kind of... I honestly, take, let's take the piss for a second here. Like, let's have a laugh. Yeah. This is getting silly. This is too serious. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if like a lot of his stuff is actually just improv. Like if they just said, yeah. if they just said, go. okay, you know what? Here's a set. Go with it. Like yeah. do what you want to do. Cause he seems pretty, pretty into it. Well, what can we tell you? Well, it's a secret meeting. Okay. And, and, and because the script was so poorly, not poorly done, but just kind of piecemeal put together yeah. so quickly or cheaply done. Cause they were filming two movies at the same time. He walked in and I wouldn't be surprised if he showed up in the other movie and had a more prominent role. 
Mm. Yeah, and I've never seen the other one either, so. I just found... Wait a minute. (laughs) (laughs) I thought it was quite funny that he seemed to be the only character interacting a lot with the set. Whereas all these other actors throughout the entire movie, they weren't really touching the set per se. Whereas him, whenever he was talking, he kind of put his hand on something and he'd be playing with something in the background. And he'd just be talking to you, doing, you know, exposition dumps. But at the same time, you get character from him because he'd be resting his head against something and go, oh, yeah, sorry, I can't rest my head against that. And he'd be playing with something and, like, drop it or playing with something and, like, you know, fuck with it and break it. And he'd be like, oh, fuck. And I felt like that was very different from a lot of the other actors. I felt like he was getting into the environment a lot more, which is what made yeah. him so good to me. That's where you get uh, the guy with the one eye, the robot eye in Man- or Boba Fett, where he does, like, the spin shoot in the in the trench coat because you know he was on set for only a couple of days and he got his name in a credit and he's in star wars so he's gonna get the oh he's gonna put all that's all of the he's gonna like overact the shit out of it because he's (laughs) like i'm gonna get i'm gonna try to get noticed here yeah Yeah, not for this movie but for anything else i can be in kind of thing yeah so barbarella gets the super secret outfit which leaves nothing secretive about her right boob at all it was the right one. Yeah. Because her left boob's covered. It's all, you know, it's all covered. But her right boob just has a piece of plastic that just show. I don't want to say it shows off the boob because it's, you know, it's, it's muffled and it's kind of weird. The plastic does something weird shit. But clearly throughout the entire filming, it must have caused her problems because she just adjusted that on every scene. Oh, yeah. And they just left that in there because, you know, why not? Why not? Which this ultimately led to her getting caught again. She She gets help getting back into the castle. And it leads her to being caught to, I think, what is my second favorite scene of the entire movie. The church organ? The the, the organ that plays with organs. The church, oh, yeah, the, yeah. The church organ, <laughs> yeah. No, she gets transported up and, like, yeeted out into a hallway. <laughs> yeah, <'cause laughs> she bounces. <laughs> and she, she pulls the costume out of her ass and then it fixes her. And then she sits with the ladies doing the duca. Oh, <laughs> the duca. Oh, taking the those man sick- essence. Sick bong rips of and Duca. Just to elaborate, there's a there's a man swimming around in a giant hookah, and there's a bunch of women kind of taking hits off of like a, a hookah pipe. Yeah, of the essence of man. Yeah. There's a room full Literally. of giant blow up pillows. There's a woman uh, strapped to like the ceiling, and another woman running a torch under her feet. I want to be clear. The lady's oh, yeah. hanging from the ceiling is strapped and she's got bondage gear that's just, she's just straight up naked. Yeah. The yeah. only thing covered is her vajayjay. Yeah. 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 And there's other women just nude in the background. Yeah, in the walls. Like dancing around mm-hmm. covered in body paint that happens to be the same color the glass is painted. Yeah. So you can kind of make them out as they make out in the background. And it's just crazy. Fucking yeah, it's, wild. It's a weird scene. Honestly, this and Logan's run, because Logan's run, and I'm not going to spoil anything, but there's a whole like pleasure scene. Wow. Where it reminds me a lot of this, but it's done in a, a, a little bit more artsy fartsy manner where it's, it's less is more. Mm. I can't wait to watch that film with you. So yeah, what's his uh, what's his face? The champ, not the champ. The concierge. The concierge catches her, just, even though she so, tries to hide. Just so happens to be walking through the 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 harem room. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's like, oh, I see it's like, you escaped oh, the you. bird cage. Like, I don't immediately know. points her out. Bang! Oh, you got out of the cage, and she's like, oh, what? And like, coughs some smoke out. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, fuck. Uh, clearly caught, and then he, he takes her, handcuffs her, sticks her in the church grinder, or the church organ, if you will. <laughs> the church grinder. And uh, what happens? Well, for one, it's the orgasm machine. I'm sorry. Did they actually give it a name? Yeah, oh, yeah. I think, I don't know if that's the legit name, or if that's just what people call it. Yeah, the Got orgasmatron. The orgasm- or the, yeah, uh, the orgasm machine, the orgasmatron, and it has like, a couple different, like... So, Hitachi. The main secret to this one got a lot of names. My only note after, so at some point I stopped taking notes because I couldn't do it anymore mm-hmm, mm-hmm, in this movie. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I only had one more note after I stopped taking notes. That's how important this note is to yeah. me. Piano death by sexual pleasure. <laughs> death by snoo Yeah. Death by snoo you know, death. So he created a uh, a machine basically that looks like a like a like an iron lung. 
Yeah. In a way where it's just her head popping out and you're just kind of laying, but then over your over everything, it's just kind of like a cascading like a uh, organ playing where like it kind of plays out a sequence like the piano keys. David works in the Navy. <laughs> I don't get that one. Piano man. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I just love that they, they start the scene. They open the scene up with um, a picture of sheet music, colorful sheet music. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah, and everything's yeah. on cellophane. It's all on pl- clear plastic. And we're just trying to figure out what's about to go down. <laughs> like, there's this, what's, and then it the scene unfolds slowly. And you're like, what the fuck? And you're not sure if all of the women in the background are either passed out or dead. Yeah. 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 There's a bunch of bodies just strewn off well, to the side. My question is, like, I don't know if it's ever explained, but why he's doing it? You know, like, is he just trying to, like... I think he's just into it. It's just a form of torture. He's just into it. So he was, like, intending to kill her to get her, like, out of the way? I genuinely don't think any of the women in the background are dead. I think they're just passed out. They're just exhausted. No, no. no, the scene's meant to kill you. They're They're dead. dead. They're meant to kill you, He kills them, but he finds pleasure in killing them in this manner. He clearly is a mad genius that is into killing people in creative and interesting ways. Because mm-hmm. it pleases the ooze. Yeah. Not just the ooze, but it pleases him. Oh, yeah. And it pleases his ooze. Pleases his ooze. <laughs> cool. so, Ninja Turtles 2, Secret of the Pleasing Ooze. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 no. Oh. I never told you how you were born, Turtles. Oh, my um, God. So he starts playing the, the piano pleasure device, yeah. and she's just enjoying the shit out of this. Well, at first she's like, what the fuck are you doing? And you see like her clothes kind of get like Teletubby sucked out of the room <laughs> and <laughs> thrown across, like Amazing. boots and her clothes yeah, and, and yeah. all of her outfits and shit. And she's laying there and then, yeah, it starts and she's kind of like, oh, and like it just kind of slowly starts in and he is like. You're doomed. This is going to kill you, Barbarella. <laughs> ah! And then it just, she just starts and she's having just, orgasms. Yeah, <laughs> she's just multiple orgasms yeah. like crazy. They put tons of sweat on her, water in her spritzing hair, her. spritzing her like ever. She was drenched yep, for that. Yep, yep. Oh, yeah. That, oh, yeah. I I can only hope that there is a day in my life where I get orgasms of that rega- that degree. That sweaty? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. There, yeah. there, that is... I don't think there's a human on this planet that's ever had that level of sexual ap- whatever action going on. That's insane. But- Lay underneath the piano. <laughs> <Ladies and> gentlemen, <laughs> yeah. If you're listening to this right now, don't even pause it. We're going to give you a couple seconds. I'm just going to breathe really heavy and talk real low. Lay down flat on your back. Get under that piano. <laughs> yes. Have someone just start playing some Beethoven <laughs> in the lowest key you can and just, just close your eyes and imagine Barbarella in that tight machine I, anyway I, so i will come on the piano for you leave because we're gonna kick the legs out as it crushes but your lungs immediately um, it turns out i don't quite understand is it that she didn't orgasm that no, she, she couldn't get her to no orgasm? she did she outlasted the machine right so the machine started to like couldn't smoke keep and up with her on fire right <laughs> oh my right. god couldn't keep up with her and then it literally caught on fire which is a little alarming when you think about like she's in a coffin presumably naked because it's the 60s, so she's presumably naked because there's yeah. a whole thing where she's like, "Put the cl- give me the clothes so I can put the clothes on. And then you watch her kind of get dressed. Yeah, yeah. Which is like, that's not needed. There's no reason for that yeah. kind of thing. But they probably got her naked. Well, the fact- And then they just lit the fucking thing on fire. Yeah, yeah. there's fire like, like right next to her head. You know what I mean? Like there's a little bit of like, oh, you can't do that anymore. <laughs> can't do that anymore. Well, the fact that, that he tried to kill her and then was like, you insatiable girl, you shameful- Ba ba ba, and she's like, "Oh, well, that was something." Uh, grab me some clothes, and he not only grabs her a really nice dress off of probably one of the, the dead corpses. dead women, yeah, yeah. but also matching boots. Yeah. Yes, which I appreciate. That band knows how to I, appreci- coordinate. I appreciate that too. Outfits within an outfit. Welcome to podcast and then proceeds <laughs> to tell her like, oh, like, "I'm just a little down, and I just I want to be ruler." And I'm sorry, like, he didn't even apologize, but like, oh, sorry for trying to kill you, but this is what I actually want to do. This is my evil plan. By the way, he leaves the room after stomping his feet and having a little bit of a temper tantrum, comes back with four pillows and a, like, not a giant, but a very large rubber fetus. Yeah, that was, I I kind of didn't know where they were going to yeah. go with that, but it was comes weird. comes back with, a, with four pillows and a rubber fetus. 
I do not remember. You this. don't remember that because they like don't a mention big, it. Like, black. He just comes thing. back with like four pizza box shaped pillows, and there is a rubber fetus curled I up. That was just part of his clothing. No. no, that was like a weird rubber sex toy. Okay, see, I thought it was weird because I, I, I he's noticed... like, I'm gonna fucking get you. You'll, you'll fucking die of coming, and he comes back with a fetus and pillows. Okay, I thought that was kind of strange because I thought his his outfit, like he had like this on, on his chest, was fairly flat. And then in this scene, I noticed that it was protruding, and forevermore it was always kind of protruding. No, he, he was back. holding something. He walked yeah. back with four pillows and a rubber fetus. Oh my god! Yeah, it was, it was like, weird. Whoa, what the fuck? This guy's into some weird shit. He was clearly into some weird shit. So it was at that time where he, she. She gets he, out of the machine. He kind of she gets out of the machine. He plays this game of well, I would take her, uh, you know, take out the great tyrant if I could, but I can't because the other her robots will just kill me right away. Right. Well, it turns out she's only weak during her in her dream room. Yeah, it's in her time. dream room, and Barbarella was coincidentally given the secret key from the secret, secret guy. Secret key. Secret key. Uh, you're also forgetting this is where we find out that this man is, in fact, Duran oh, Duran. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> he was Duran Duran the entire time? Mr. Concierge is, in fact, the Duran Duran. Duran Duran. <laughs> My name is Duran. Duran. Um, so, yeah, he, he's like, yeah, well, I wanted to kill her the whole time because she's evil tyrant. That's what I've been wanting to do. And she's like, great. I got the secret. Our key. plans line up. Our we plans- can actually let's go back. Right. Yeah. Let's get let's kill her. Let's liberate the planet. And yeah. then I'll come back to, with Earth, to Earth to you. Yeah. And she's like fucking sweet. Yeah. This is how diplomacy works. Everything went better than expected. But he goes, you know, I couldn't possibly we couldn't even attempt it unless you had the secret key. And she's like this secret key, which, which is invisible. You made a point that the machine didn't rip it off of her. Yeah, the machine, yeah. which rips off her clothing, did not rip off her necklace. Yeah. And didn't make any bell noises throughout her entire writhing, right, sexual writhing. Right, there was writhing. no jingle jingle. There was no jingle jingle. And <laughs> if you all had better surround sound, I'm sure you'd hear some jingle jangle. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> so they, they do this whole thing. He, she's like, well, he goes, I'll prove to me you have the real key. What does it look like? And she goes, well, it's invisible. He goes, my God. And he goes, my God, you do have it. <laughs> <laughs> so good. What a fucking bad MacGuffin. Oh, yeah. What a bad MacGuffin, eh? We can't afford a prop. And what can we... It's undescribable. Well, what if it's just invisible? Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Genius. <laughs> Absolutely. So All right. Go to this, like, sexual room with... Honestly, it kind of reminded me of... Kind of reminded me of uh, the river of, of Sophie from Elden Ring. Yeah. Well, she walks into the wall. Yeah, it's yeah, a yeah, fucking yeah. plate of glass. Like they the don't glass tell her, bubbles. and she just walks into the wall. <laughs> oh my god! And they're like, "Oh, cle- we clearly found it. We found the- we-, we found the force field." Yeah, she just, <laughs> an like a bird key. on the glass. <laughs> Boom! It's an invisible key that opens up an invisible wall. Oh my god! And then the- that's yeah. sound logic. It is because she starts feeling for the keyhole, can't find it using her hands, and then she drops the key after Duran Duran and her fight over it, opening the door. Duran Duran rushes in the room after shoving Barbarella into the secret dream chamber, grabbing the other invisible key, and then th- leaving and throwing it into the waters. I'm guessing the, the dream liquid. Yeah, I don't know. and sealing the great tyrant and Barbarella in the bedroom chambers. And then he has the best evil laugh. He just laughs his ass off. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I will get you. No, even that's better. There was like, he's <laughs> 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 just, just walking away. You're like, what is, is that a laugh? I don't know what's going on. Is that a laugh or a screen a door? Like, <laughs> is that a screen door in the wind? <laughs> In Kansas, we get tornado weather, and when those screen doors start squeaking, oh God, Barbarella, you better be worried. <laughs> it was so bad. Oh, it was oh, so man. great. And then so he start within moments, he's being coronated. No one's like, "What? Where's the great tyrant?" It's like, nope, nope. He gets a crown right away. We he need a crown. crown. That's it. Fan. If no one's in charge. All society falls apart. Nintendo Geek, you, you look like you've been sitting on some juicy facts for us. Oh, no. Us. Um, so, Barbara gets shoved into the dream chamber, and uh, the great, the black queen, or the great tyrant, 
Uh, is, yeah, she's got a fifth name now. Yeah, yeah. the Black Queen. Uh, she's dreaming of Pygar, and like Barbara like, can kind of see her dreams, and she's kind of running around trying to escape. And then she finally runs over to the tyrant who is sleeping in a bed of like a a woman kind of like laid on her back with her arms up. Uh, like you made the comment of like the best like race car bed ever, but it's just like a woman <laughs> that's on her back. And she's like, you got to wake up. And then she's like, what? And then Barbara was like, he's taking over. He double crossed you. And she's like, no, that can't happen. And then they, uh, uh, they, <laughs> apparently what there is, uh, this never made it into the movie, but apparently there is a, a seduction scene between Barbarella and the Black Queen on the bed. Why well, the fuck didn't that make it into the movie? So there's uh, <laughs> photographs of it uh, showing footage of seduction scene between Barbarella and the Black Queen. However, the footage has never appeared in any print of the film. So there could have been like a sex Somebody's scene. Somebody's got that stash in their bedroom. They clearly implied it and there is the resistance starts at this point, right before At the, the same time, yeah. So they, she's trying to wake her up. Their coronation's happening and then uh, Dan Dillo's army of rebels are attacking to try to liberate the city. Yes. So it's all kind of like a weird conclusion. Uh, the Black Queen is going to then release the Magmas, even though it will consume everything uh, and destroy the city, but it's the only way. Uh, so she unleashes the Magmas with a, 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 a variety of levers. That were crystalline, of course. And there's dials. No, there's dials on her Yeah, bed. there's dials and, and levers. And she's like, Barbarella. Uh, apparently she was going to seduce her, but there's no time. We need to save the city. Also purge the city. And then... Uh, well, she kind of does the... The Black Queen kind of does the... If I can't have the city, no one can have yeah. the city. Yeah. That's kind of her... We're, yeah. we're skipping over the fact that uh, Mr. Durand Durand gets out his giant laser particle oh, beamy thing. the whole thingy. thing about the movie. The uh, the uh, psionic ray. That, and just starts zapping everybody that's doing the, the incursion into the fourth Doesn't dimension. Doesn't kill them. Sends them to the fourth dimension where we have no idea what their fate is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that happens, and then he's basically just like Gatling gun nuking everybody and that's when the black queen goes yeah we're not gonna win this so let's just let's just do the nuclear option yeah we're gonna release the magma wild that they escalate to that level so quickly but also that it sort of works yeah well that's yeah. why the you labyrinth I mean? people were so afraid of getting closer because the black tyrant shoved everywhere out of the city duran duran created this weapon that like, hey, if you tried to like, I'm surprised he didn't do that in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to show off that power. Yeah, but I think he was still trying to be like goody goody with the queen, mm. biding his time. Maybe, but I think there was so at this point the queen and the black, uh, qu the black queen and Barbarella may or may not have been getting it on because they kind of cut away and they implied it. They kind of implied it while the magma is consuming the city and consuming them. They It created a, a bubble. It created a bubble because it didn't, because Barbarella was so pure that it created a bubble around them. It didn't want to get near Barbarella. I right. think the Black Queen described it as the ooze has vomited you out because you're so pure. So basically, yeah, it's like, oh, I don't want to touch you. So I'm just going to like just... What I, you're going to be on the, the naked lady bed and we're just going to put a bubble around you and then just like rocket you the just fuck out of here. You out. Yeah, pretty much. So this whole everyone in the labyrinth dies. Mm. Yep. Pretty much. Everybody All, in the city everyone dies. Everyone who helped everyone them. Everyone in the city dies. <laughs> yeah. Uh, some have maybe, I don't know whether getting eaten by the ooze or getting sent to the fourth dimension is, is, the, is worse. I don't know. But everyone, there is no winners here except for Pygar. Pygar survives. Pygar picks up Barbarella to get away from the ooze because he can fly. And at the same time, picks up the Black Queen. She kind of like wiggles her way <laughs> under his arm. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. he flies off with them both in arm. And so. they're all kind of like touching his body and they're very getting real close and looking at each other all weird. And we get the best no, line. No, Barrel's like, Pycar, why would you help her? And this is like a couple minutes into the flight after they had oh, this yeah, like there's, there's this potential beautiful moment between them that was not shown. 
why would you pick up her if she's done so much bad to everybody? And then we get angels don't remember. What, what, what was the line? Angel, angels have no memory. Angels have no memory. And he looks directly at the camera <laughs> with his deadpan look. And credits. Credits. <laughs> and that's the movie. What? An, so, so we just caused mass genocide, mass genocide of an entire planet. Yep. Wookiee Man is dead. Yep. The children at the lake are dead. Goodbye. And, and the the good man- people in the labyrinth are Goodbye. dead. The mantas are dead. Oh, worse loss. So here's the thing. Uh, long story short, Keith Richards was dating the Black Queen. Oh. Uh, that and is insane. So Keith Richards, when the filming of Barbarella, uh, was on house arrest. He couldn't leave the country of Britain because they had found uh, the Rolling... I think three of the members of the Rolling Stones, they got arrested for drugs. No. <laughs> Back in the 60s, right? <laughs> this was their like first slap on the wrist. So uh, Keith's lawyer and uh, his manager pretty much said, hey, you've been mop- moping around. Fuck this. Let's go see your girlfriend. Let's get out of the country. And he's like, I'm on house arrest. And he says, what we're going to do is we're going to call the producer. We're going to call the film company. And we're going to say, you're going to, you're going to score the movie. And if you can't leave the country to go work on the film set, it's going to take away from your livelihood. So they call the courts and they go through all the bullshit. And they pay the thousand dollars to pass go. <laughs> and sure as shit, a week later, Keith's in Spain. Ah, Right. So Keith's in Spain. With his fixer. When you're rich, crime doesn't it's just doesn't not matter, yeah, yeah. right? And they're doing the VIP treatment. They're going through the film sets. They're seeing all the costumes. Stuff's fucking wild, right? Having sex on people beds? No, no, not yet. And uh, Jane Fonda was notorious for hosting wild parties after the shoots, after the days of filming. Oh, I'm sure. Wild parties, which leans more and more into like, how much of the money was going towards the movie? And how much of the money was actually just going towards like, we're in Europe fucking partying as hard as we want, doing yep. anything. So the fixer, uh, Jane Fonda's only rule was that you were to bring something to her parties. So Keith asked the fixer to make cake. So the fixer goes and he hits up every single fucking person he knows in Spain to get hash. Oh, no. And he gets and he makes a fucking killer hash cake. Huh. He, get, he gets a killer hash cake. And fucking straight out, and this is like these. There's rumors and stories passed around and stuff like that. There's a lot of a lot of stories, even from Jane Fonda. Some she remembers, some she doesn't, because she's slightly older and <laughs> excessive drugs and alcohol will do that to you. Uh, halfway through the party, Keith comes up to the producer and is like, "Hey, man, uh, the cake isn't hitting me. We're on our second piece." You're embarrassing me. And I told everybody, I'm fucking Keith Richards. I'm from the Rolling Goddamn Stones. And it's not hitting us. What the fuck? Like, your guy that, like, I'm paying you to be my fixer. And your guy fucked you. And now I look like an idiot because I showed up with brownies that are just brownies. Hard cut a few minutes later. (laughs) So everyone's super fucking stoned. And there's interviews where they talk to Pizar or Pygar. And he's like, I didn't need wings. I was high for fucking days. Oh, every man. every day on set, he w- like there's scenes where if you rewatch certain bits of those scenes from Barbarella, the reason why you're like, oh, he's so like, look at how well he's acting. He's so blind. This is amazing. He's fucking gone. Half the cast, like yeah, half the did. cast, if not if not half more, the cast is just fucking looped out of their goddamn brain. Because they're so high. <laughs> and they're just going through this movie. You could totally tell. Riding it out. So that whole like, the angel has no memory. He's like trying to hold back giggles. Because <laughs> he's so fucking high. Oh, he couldn't remember and his he lines. Couldn't, he couldn't. That's like part of it is that like they were just throwing so much money and wealth around. And then being Jane Fonda and Keith Richards and all of like everybody wants to come party on the set of Barbarella. Oh, my God. Oh, all yeah. of the famous people want to part like the like we have this huge crystal palace. Do you guys want to do copious amounts of drugs and alcohol? And we're gonna have the Rolling Stones play <laughs> like prime six nineteen sixties like era. Oh yeah, like, like just un unfathomable amounts of uh just 
indulgence. You know, those you know what people... I mean? Like the whole film and the whole like the the vibe of it afterwards, and then like you get into the Flash Gordon, you get into Flesh Gordon, you get in this whole era of like. Oh, this is why they stopped making these kinds of movies. The thing oh, is, this is, is why they pulled back a bit because it was getting too fucking wild. And you do get some of the sexual harassment stuff and the other problematic shit yeah. comes out. Like it all oh, sounds yeah. fun and crazy until it's like you get one night that goes one too night far. goes too far and you're like, fuck, we can't ever do that again. Yeah. Never work with this guy in Hollywood again. Those generations and I, I hear parent stories from my parents and shit like that. And I always feel like there's some generation, some groups of people that live lifetimes of life in their experiences. Like they just have experiences that the rest of us couldn't possibly fathom. It's true. Right. Like just coked out nights with the Rolling Stones in your personal house. Right. Just getting all fucked up on a in a in a crystal set because that's where you're partying that day and you gotta figure out how to clean it up the next day. Right. Like you that, film. Yeah. yeah, because you gotta film. That shit doesn't happen. Like it doesn't no. happen as much anymore. Or it's not talked about. Or it's a lot more somehow it's a lot more secretive, even though we've got, you know, a lot more, more ways, things to record that to record. yeah yeah so i don't I, just, I think it's just not happening as much which is really weird it's both good because i'm sure there was a lot of malfeasant sexual abuse yeah and therefore it is good that it went away but at the same time there's a level of fun and weirdness that went away so you we kind of threw the baby out with a bath but how could you keep the baby with that bath absolutely and granted this is 1968 times were very different and I know that gets thrown around a lot, but realistically, saying it's 1968, times were a hell of a lot different back then. We're Still very true. true, very true. Um, to speak on Jane Fonda, she went on to do some amazing things with charity work. With uh, oh my god, it's I'm blanking because of the night. She was really being an activist. She's an activist. Uh, she That's was why like I, a, with the Vietnam I, War in huge, the 70s. Huge she was stuff. anti, like huge, huge, huge yeah. stuff. Um, for her work uh, in the future that she went on to do. But I think it's time for this second podcast within a podcast. Adam, Plebeian Amanda, Nintendo Geek. Where would you rate the eyebrows of Barbarella oh. in the film? Barbarella? I not mean, just not, Jane Fonda. not Durand. Not Jane Fonda. Durand? Which, which, where are we talking eyebrows in general? Because I've got mine picked out already. I mean, they were fairly regular as eyebrows go maybe film, like a yeah. bit thin yeah. yeah um i would say what is the what is the max on the eyebrow scale well i think uh the dune eyebrows were pretty fucking wild yeah 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 those are pretty crazy those are wild i would honestly i'm gonna say for mine it would be the gentleman on the ice planet as soon as he took off his his fur suit that will mark his entire body being an eyebrow <laughs> for that one, and in which case Amazing. that will be you the mean, eyebrow. Uh, Mark Hand. Mark Hand will be the eyebrow for the eyebrow. If anyone would protest, no, his I think that man. That man's eyebrow. Gets the eyebrow. Like, no, I would fuck. say. Uh, Duran Duran had the some great wild tyrant one. as the devilish rogues oh, bush. Yeah. Out of the oh, little peekaboo oh, window, yeah. Yeah. the little peekaboo window versus his chest hair. Eh? All right, so we'll 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 lock that up to the bush and the brow, <laughs> the Beauty and the Beast, if you will. <laughs> for, nice, uh, Barbarella. Let's go around the table before we close out the night. Adam, what would you rate Barbarella, and would you watch it again? So, like I've said before, under five is generally a bad movie. Okay, that I would not watch again. Under seven is a decent movie that I would not watch again. Above seven is I would watch it again. I consider it a decent movie. So I'd probably put this at a five. Okay. Okay. I had fun. Yeah. Um, obviously, you guys know I missed dialogue because I was laughing so hard. It is a, It is like a. It is you uh, would do some substances or have a few beverages. For and sure. And kind of put it on in the background and, and not necessarily watch. But like have on in the background and have a laugh. Yeah. Kind of thing. You look over and go, oh, fuck a tit. Or, oh, fuck. Like, look at that psychedelic background piece kind of thing. Like, it yeah. is enjoyable. But it, it definitely, it's not a good movie. It doesn't fall. It follows some formulaic math, but it's, it, I could not track. It had weird pacing. It had massive problems as a movie, but as an entertainment piece. I was entertained. It's artsy fartsy. It's artsy, but fartsy. it's artsy fartsy and not the standard artsy fartsy conventional way that yeah. we're used to. In a way, Nintendo Geek, you brought 
our Barbarella over, and it is one of your personal favorites, I know. But what would you rate Barbarella? I have seen this movie many times. Uh, I first seen it uh, in my movie or film society club in high school. I was like a 16-year-old wow. <laughs> after school on a Wednesday, and I was blown away because I'd never really seen anything like it. It explains so many posters and artifacts that you have in your apartment. <laughs> <laughs> True, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've seen this movie, not countless times, but at least I want to say 10 times I know, now. you own it. Yeah, I own it. Uh, I've seen it, like, the first time was, like, what, like, 16 years ago. I love it. I think it is a, as a masterpiece in its own right. It's kind of a, if you're into sci-fi, you ha- like Flash Gordon, you have to watch it. At least in, once. In order yeah. to. You have to see it. You have yeah. to see yeah. it. Yeah. And uh, like I said in the beginning of the podcast, it has touched so much in modern, uh, like I think Ariana Grande has a music video uh, based around this. Katy Perry's E.T. was kind of based around this, like The Fifth Element. There's countless uh, odes to it in pulp fiction or pulp culture, I should say. And like, it's just, it's, it is perfect in its own right. It's a mess, but it's perfect. Yeah, like yeah. it, like I said, it has its own plot line that is it. She she finds a scientist, and then it just kind of goes to shit in a way, and it kind of ends a little odd. But that could have been budget. Who knows? Right. I, I do want to slightly add because you mentioned how it touched the Fifth Element, mm-hmm. and Plubby and wife Amanda already knows this, but that is my favorite movie of all time. I love the Fifth Element. Fifth Element's overrated. Shut your <laughs> mouth. It's <laughs> fucking overrated. But you can see Ugh. where her strappy silver outfit is owed. Uh, you can see where Fifth Element is like the strappy white outfit where yeah. she first wakes up, right? Like mm, it. Yeah, yeah. It's just one of those ones where it's like, yeah, it kind of like skyrocketed Jane Fonda. But also Jane Fonda like changed her tune after this and started going more activism. She stopped kind of caring about her looks, about what people thought of her. And like... It just kind of like changed so much. So I would definitely, I love it. I would watch it again. Very cool. Yeah. Flubby and Amanda. Oh, I would give this movie probably six and a half vibrating mana rays. Out I of love 10. it. I love a six. Uh, I'll take a six and a half. Six and a half because I don't think it deserves a blow of five because I've seen far worse movies, like far worse. Okay. So I got a lot of laughs out of this and I, I give it credit because you know it, it it takes a lot to be a bad movie but still entertaining it's old too though right yeah you know that too I mean? like, and it's just it's this level of like artistic cheese that just has its own little like nuances that like i don't know you want to take it seriously because it it tries to be kind of serious but you really can't well it's, it's a, just it's a way like they're they're re they're, they think they're inventing the wheel yeah and maybe they are. Like, they kind of did for sci-fi back then, right? Because there really wasn't much sci-fi. So they did invent a wheel that was a little more squared or crystalline shaped or some funky... Maybe it was covered phallic. in fur. I don't know. A phallic fur wheel. Right, right. <laughs> so, I mean, it was something, but it was just... It was it was a little too out there, I think. So, yeah, six and a half. I'll give it six and a half. Well, they kind of created the... the, the- bombshell blonde like space babe yeah that's true it really that, cemented that, a big that trope for a while especially after people actually went to space and they had those like posters of like oh like martian girl or like moon woman right with the skimpy space suit. gotta love moon woman <laughs> all i can think about is moon moon i honestly moon, you're, moon? you were either a martian girl or a moon woman kind of guy you know what i mean <laughs> You know what I mean. I know. I know exactly what you mean. I'm not making fun of it at all. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. So six and a half? Yeah. Six and a half. Six and a half. Solid six and a half. Personally, um, as a science fiction piece, as an art piece, as uh, something that wasn't necessarily shown everywhere in the United States or even Canada, uh, for a film that might have even been banned in some states because of how oh, of course. risque it was. Oh, for sure. Uh it's a timepiece, man. I think we'd never... I think the the fact... The amount of people who have either bought the rights, whether it's Robert Rodriguez or Amazon, uh, I think HBO even tried to make it into something, uh, and just kind of picked it up and went, fuck, what do we do with this? Because there is so many... There is some good bones to this material. And there could be a great story here and a great either series or a very sex-positive, very... Uh, 
almost even now ahead of its time story, whether that's a trans woman in the future, whether that's uh, a person of color, whether that's literally just the same story just redone in today's standard with a better CGI budget. I think Barbarella is important. It might not be great as a story. It might not be, uh, it might not stand on its own two feet, but honestly, I will, I will go with a seven. I'll go seven, five, even, uh, I enjoy Barbarella. It's dumb as hell, but honestly, I, in a weird sort of way, I don't remember what we gave Flash Gordon, but I feel like Barbarella is very close to like a Flash Gordon level where if it had maybe one or two more big action set pieces and a little bit of a better budget or someone in control of that budget, we would have maybe got a little bit of a tighter film. But knowing that they filmed a movie, two movies back to back, so Barbarella and another film, uh, Destroyer or Destro- Destroyo or whatever, uh, kind of means that they were splitting hairs with either their actors, their budgets, their set designers, their well, costumes. Designers. Roger Vadim, he even said like he wasn't really that focused on the script. And that's what a lot of people on set were really kind of frustrated about. He was more into like the design and getting the shots and all that. So the script was kind of secondary. And I think if somebody would have put more thought into the script and more thought into like the storyboarding, that could have been where it could have been more like put together. Well, that's he true. Just wanted a snuff film of his wife, in a way. Yeah. And I mean, and that's the same thing with look at Flash Gordon, right? The art director and the set builder went way off the fucking rails and started building other planets and other stuff. And then finally, when the director and the producers showed up, they went, "Yo, we can't use any of this, and you're, we're way over budget. You have to throw half of this stuff out." And they weren't even able to film. I think Barbarella is enjoyable. I think it's a hot mess. It's definitely a hot mess. But uh, oh, yeah. it's yeah. it's great, and it 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 has its its own timepiece. It's got its own. It's got a killer soundtrack, and it's enjoyable. Um, it's yeah. actually uh, listed among the hundred most amusingly bad movies ever made in the uh, glo- or Golden Raspberry Award. It deserves that. It deserves yeah. that. I'll so, give yeah. it that. I'll give it, Barbarella it, it, that. It knows at the time it may not have known it was going to be bad. It didn't know it was going to be a cult movie, but it's definitely like, hey, it's from 1968 and we're still talking about it. What? 50 years? No, oh, almost 60 years later. Yeah. 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 But so, I think it's enjoyable. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. Amanda's, thank you for both being on. Anytime. We enjoy it. Always. Um, Plebe and Adam, is there anything you want to plug? Uh, yeah, we've got our next set of um, speed runs coming out shortly. Okay. And we've got an episode on Elden Ring that probably just went out or is just about to come out. And we've got another episode on The Boys Diabolical on Prime. Oh, shit. I haven't even seen any of that. It is phenomenal. Rob and I break it down. It is so much fun. Have you watched The Guardians uh, show on Netflix yet? No. Apparently, the bootleg one, you know what I'm talking about? Yep. Stone Cold Steve Austin is apparently Batman no i didn't know he was in that as batman but i know about the show you're talking about. yeah apparently it's phenomenal <laughs> oh, okay apparently it's phenomenal so, so yeah, i can't come wait. on there talk about we're all playing elden ring right now we we're just all spend, playing onion oh, rings we're all we can't elden ring. get our hands out of those onion rings we're <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have a uh digital love on we've got two new games coming out we've got uh, uh what's that one that i just finished playing don't starve. Don't starve. Don't starve. And we are going to have Elden Ring coming out. So join us on Discord. Talk about the games we're coming out. Uh, join us on Cephalopod, the podcast app. And that's where you can find us. Where can we help you find you? I'm at Geek Movie House. Uh, I am at Nintendo underscore Geek on Instagram. I post photos. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I'm at Geek Movie House on all the things. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit us up also on the iTunes, uh, rating us and reviewing us just helps push us and shares us with a brighter, a broader community and amount of people to see. Thank you very much, everybody. And uh, we'll see you again. Love. 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 Love.